nice to meet you, Sarah. I'm Vanessa. I know we won't be friends for long, but hello. Huh? Who are you? How did you find my contact information? Vanessa? There's no such person in my acquaintance. I'm going to get right to it, but I want you and Harold to divorce. Harold says he'd like that too. Huh? Wait, I don't understand. Do you know Harold? What are you talking about when you say divorce? You don't understand? Harold wants to break up with you and marry me. Are you Harold's lover? Lover? Don't be silly. I'm his favorite. Harold promised to divorce you and marry me. Even if that's true, I'm Harold's wife now. No, he's serious about me. That's why I wouldn't be called a lover. You're in my way. Get a divorce now. You don't understand, do you? Well, okay, if that's true, I'm going to divorce him. But after all, I'm his wife now. I'm going to demand compensation from both you and Harold, okay? What? Harold will pay for both of us. If you want, we can pay you double what you want. Is that really alright? I think that'll hurt you later. <laughs> so pathetic. You are a loser. P pathetic? You can't say that to someone you don't know. I just told a pathetic person that she's pathetic. That's why you get your husband stolen. You don't have any common sense. I'm sure you're Harold's favorite type. A stupid girl who is just young and pretty. It seems like Harold was dating a 19-year-old student a while ago. Young and pretty? Sarah, you're so nice. Huh? No, that's not a compliment. A lot of people say I look younger than my age. The other day, a new hire told me that I looked like I was 20 years old. Huh? Are you working? How old are you really? I'm 32 years old. You're older than me? I can't believe it. Well, if you're working, you would be able to pay compensation, so I'm relieved. You do have savings, don't you? Are you kidding? Why would I save money? All my salary is invested in myself. Otherwise, I won't be able to stay young and beautiful. Huh. I pay all my salary to beauty. You see, with a woman this good, it's no wonder Harold chose me, right? I can't believe you're over 30 and you don't have any savings. We're adults, so we have to make an effort to stay beautiful. Are you disappointed that someone older than you stole Harold from you? You are, aren't you? How can someone still be this silly in their 30s? Oh, you're being a bad loser again. You must be really frustrated that you lost to an older woman. If I could marry him, it wouldn't hurt or itch. By the way, why do you want to marry Harold so much? You're asking that now? He's cool, he's kind to me. And that's not all. He works for a major IT company. Huh? He makes $150,000 a year. How nice! Beautiful me and perfect him. Don't you think we make a good couple? I don't think he's that perfect. But, okay, I'm going to divorce Harold. I no longer have affection for a man who cheats on me. I have to talk to him. Great! Thanks, Sarah! Don't forget to pay the compensation. Well... That's okay, because your rich husband pays for it. This is quite sudden, but Harold and I are getting a divorce. I love you two for being nice to me like your real daughter, but I can't stand Harold's cheating habits anymore. I'm really sorry. I heard the story from Harold. We're the ones who should apologize. We're so sorry. That stupid son. He said he really loves Vanessa and that he's leaving you. He has hurt you. That goes for both of us. I didn't seem to be making an effort to improve myself, and he told me that I'm not attractive to him anymore. 
That's how I am. That's why Harold got tired of me. He's always been a stupid kid, always getting swayed by women's appearance. I was so relieved when he married you. Looks like he's still a fool. Sarah, you were so kind. You helped us around the house when my husband and I hurt our backs. We're a family. Of course I would do that. We think of you as our real daughter, and Harold's sister says she wanted a sister like you. Harold is a fool, leaving us in trouble and thinks only of himself even at his age. He didn't seem to feel anything bad for you or for our family. He didn't even say he was sorry. This divorce and remarriage for his own reasons, with no regard for his family, is not going to work. I won't let him. I'm sorry. I've already made up my mind about the divorce. I have agreed, too. I care about you and your husband, and I love you, too. But I can't be with Harold. Well, if that's what you say, it can't be helped. However, I will not let him remarry. I haven't even met her yet, but from what I've heard, she's older than you guys and doesn't have much common sense. I'm worried because some of my friends have lost their family because of their weird wife. I wonder if we can get along as a family. You don't have to worry too much about that, mother. Those two aren't going to last long. They won't be laughing long. I'd say a month. Huh? What do you mean? Do you know anything? Oh, no, don't worry too much anyway. I have to go to the divorce process now. I have decided to ask Harold and Vanessa each $22,000 in alimony. I'm sorry for you two. What are you talking about? I'll make my stupid son pay properly. Don't let it discourage you. Thank you. You too. Sarah! You take Harold in. I'm in trouble. Well, hey, Vanessa. First time in a week? Hurry up, Sarah. I want you to pick him up right away. It's impossible to be the stay-at-home wife of my dreams. What's wrong, Vanessa? Did something happen? I don't know what's going on. Can you explain it to me? He was lying. His work is a lie. His income is also a lie. It is an IT company, but he's just a regular employee and makes half of what he told me. Even the compensation to you. I was going to have Harold pay it, but he said, I can't pay it. You pay it yourself. I don't have any savings. Don't you think he's terrible? A week, huh? That was quicker than I thought. Quick? What do you mean? What's quick? one week until Harold's lies are revealed to you. I thought he was going to try a little harder. What? Did you know about it and did not tell me? Yes, I'm his ex-wife. He's just an employee with no title. Did he claim to have a great title? A manager or director? He said that he was promoted to director and that his incomes would soon be $150,000. He even gave me a business card. But it's all a lie. He was a regular employee with an annual income of $40,000. He cheated on me. It's a scam. You knew he was lying and you kept quiet. You are just as guilty as he is. I'll sue you. The day you first contacted me, you said he had an annual income of $150,000, so I thought it was strange. I didn't want to interrupt you because you were so excited to talk. You were happy to be the stay-at-home wife you dreamed of, weren't you? Though it was only for a week. You've got to be kidding! You're responsible for it too! I'm a victim of your and Harold's deception! I won't pay $22,000 in alimony! Let Harold take responsibility. The $22,000 is your fee for being Harold's mistress, and you will have to pay me exactly what you owe me. Well, well. Harold even got a fake business card for cheating. Vanessa, he loved you so much. Isn't it a woman's dream? Stop joking! Neither of us have any savings. There's no way we can pay $44,000 for the two of us. Please, Sarah, I'm going to break up with him. 
I want you to make sure there's no divorce or alimony. Don't be so silly. The world is not that naive to think that we can pretend the past never happened. You have parents too, don't you? You can ask them to help you, right? It's ugly that a good old adult would cry to their parents. Ugh! Ugly? But I can't help it. I'll ask her, wait a minute. Great! My mom can help me. But this is the last time she'll help me. She'll never help me again. Oh no. Even my own mom gave up on me. It's your fault. How far will you go to torment me? I'm glad you have a kind family. That helps me too. Well then, please pay me. Hey! Sarah, are you okay after that? Thank you for contacting me. Are you feeling down? I'm okay. Can we still contact you? It reminds you of bad things, doesn't it? No way! You two are my friends. We're not family anymore, but I'd love to stay in touch. I don't want this to be the end. Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad you said that. I'm at my parents' house right now. I told my parents about the situation, and they told me to come home for a while. Yes, that's a relief to hear. My husband and my daughter were worried about you. And Harold, you don't want to hear it, do you? It's okay, I'm a little curious. That stupid boy is feeling small in his office. Somehow they found out that he had an affair and got divorced. Well, he deserves it. Actually, his colleague was worried and contacted me, so I explained the situation to him. So it spread to the company. Harold should feel a little bad. He needs to be reminded of that. Thank you for your attention, mother. Oh, you're not my mother-in-law anymore. I look forward to being your friend. Absolutely. Sarah, I'm so happy. Let's stay in touch. Long time no see, Sarah. How are you doing? Are you feeling sick or something? Unfortunately, I'm fine. What about you? What about an elegant stay-at-home wife? Oh, Sarah, don't say anything nasty. Today, I have a favor to ask you. I want you to lend me some money. Money? Harold, who works for a large company, doesn't make money? How much is his income? Stop being so mean! You were the one who told Harold's company about the divorce, right? That's why he couldn't stay and left the company. He sold the stock he was investing in and paid you alimony, so he really doesn't have any living expenses. When I think about it, it's your fault. Take responsibility. You're not making sense. Did you ask Harold's parents for help? They are kind people. We tried, but they seem to be rejecting Harold's calls. They won't even listen to us. I also wanted to let them know that they have a grandchild. Grandchild? You're having a baby? I don't want to be with Harold anymore, but I can't break up because of the baby. Oh, but you see, Harold is handsome, isn't he? Whether it's a boy or a girl, I think the baby is going to be very cute. Don't you want to cuddle the baby too? A cute baby who looks exactly like Harold. You'll be the first to cuddle when the baby is born. So lend me some money? Please. Don't say stupid things. Well, the baby is innocent, so raise him or her properly. Did you tell Harold about the baby? Not yet. I just found out. I hope he acknowledges. Acknowledge? What? Wow! What are you talking about? It's Harold's child! That can't be. Harold can't have children. What? We've always wanted to have children, but we couldn't get pregnant. So at one point we had a fertility test. And then we found out it was Harold. Lies! I couldn't stand to see how Harold had a rough time after that. He became depressed, mentally unstable, ended up cheating on me, and it seems like he was dating many other women besides you. I put up with it a lot, hoping he would get back on his feet. 
I'm getting a divorce because of you, so I'll leave him to you. Uh, uh, are you okay, Vanessa? So, about the baby. Oh, I don't know what you mean. And what if, what if this wasn't Harold's child? Am I going to be asked to pay alimony again? Oh, is it possible that the baby is not Harold's child? Well, no way, that can't be. It's Harold's child, absolutely. Have you slept with other guys in this short period of time? Oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, it doesn't matter to me. Talking about money, why don't you ask your parents? Now that they have a grandchild, they will help you. I can't rely on my parents anymore. They pay you alimony and they're not wealthy, so it's not financially possible. Hey, Sarah, I want you to keep quiet about Harold's fertility test, please. Harold and I are strangers now, and I'm not going to blabber on about it. If your parents can't help you, why don't you contact Harold's parents? No, Harold and his parents are insulated. I'll contact them for you. You're going to be a mother. Be firm. Wait! You don't have to be superfluous! Vanessa, I've spoken with them. Yes? How was it? Can they help me? They can, depending on the conditions. What are the conditions? If you can do a DNA test and prove that it's Harold's child, they will help you financially. If I do a DNA test, if they find out the baby is not Harold's child, will I have to divorce Harold? I guess so. No kidding! I can't do DNA testing? Are the conditions somehow... No, I don't think it's negotiable. Of course. After that, Harold managed to try to contact his own family to tell them that they were going to have a grandchild so that they should stop insulating him, but they blocked him and he couldn't get in touch with them. He tried to take his wife directly to his parents' house, but Vanessa disagreed, so he hasn't seen them to this day after all. Harold got a job, but it seems he's working for less than his former company. Vanessa gave up being a stay-at-home wife and started working part-time right after giving birth. I heard that they live in an apartment with their children, three of them. So who is the father of the child after all? I am still friends with Harold's sister, and she introduced me to my new job. I met this guy at work and he proposed to me, and I just told Jessica and the others who have been so kind to me. It was a tough time, but... I owe Vanessa a lot for helping me meet the man I have today. Hey, Maureen. Answer me, Maureen. Yes, Bill, what's up? You're so slow to reply. Where are you right now and what are you doing? I'm at a cafe with a friend. What? You've got to be kidding me. At a cafe? What are you doing there? Well, taking a break. It's a new cafe in the neighborhood. My friend invited me. Don't mess with me. Come back right now. Why? You're wasting the money I earn. I'm not wasting. I'm sure I'm spending within the living expenses you gave me. Just because there's some money left over doesn't mean you can use it however you want. Are you kidding me? Can't I enjoy going to a cafe and having tea once in a while? Building relationships with other moms is important, you know. I thought it was a necessary expense. Don't mess with me. That's not a good excuse. I'm out there working my ass off to earn that money, and you're spending it at a cafe? I don't just stay home doing nothing. I'm taking care of household chores and raising the kids, too. Don't complain. You don't make any money, you just drink instant coffee at home. What's wrong with having some cheesecake at a cafe? I'm the one earning money for your living expenses, just do as I say. It's always like this, always. So what do you want? I decided to live with my parents. What? Why? Why would you do something like that? Shut up, it's decided already. Where did that come from? You didn't tell me anything about such an important decision? Well, I never asked for your advice in the first place. 
Why would I, who earns the money, ask you, the one I support? Just shut up and do as I say. It would have been nice if we could have discussed such an important matter. It affects my life too, you know. Living with your parents. Does that mean I'll have to take care of the child and your parents too? Well, that might be the case. Anyway, it's decided. Why didn't you tell me before you made a decision? Don't always make decisions on your own. Hey, Bill! Hey, answer me! It's always like this. What a difficult person. Hey, Bill, do you have a moment? What's up? I'm busy, so make it quick. It's about your mother. Taking care of her is really tough. I need you to help out a little too. Honestly, I've reached my limit. We're living together, so you should take care of her. It's impossible for me. Parenting, housework, caregiving, do you even understand the situation? I understand. No, you don't. You leave all the child rearing and caregiving to me without lifting a finger to help, right? Stop complaining. What's your problem? Your mother has a bad back and weakened muscles. So that's why you should take care of her, right? Don't say it so casually. She needs assistance just to go from the bed to the toilet or the living room. It's every day, and now my back hurts too. Your father helps when he's around, but he's also old now and he's still working. So I have to accompany her during the day. I've reached my limit, physically and mentally. Please help me out a little too. Did we talk about getting a caregiver? Wasn't that the plan? I don't want to make your mother be taken care of by a stranger. We've had caregivers come before, but if your mother says she doesn't want them, we can't force her. So your father and I have been taking care of her by ourselves. I'm at my limit. Could you at least try to convince your mother to accept a caregiver? Do you think I don't understand that? What do you mean? It's because of this situation that we ended up living together, you know. You knew about it? Well, it wouldn't hurt if you could help a little. I work and make money. Housework and caregiving is the wife's job, you know. Can't you even handle that much when you're being supported? You accepted living together knowing this would happen, right? So what? It's fine, I won't oppose your decision. But at least on your days off or after work, can you help with caregiving? No, that's impossible. It will affect my work. Have you seen me taking time off recently? I have a huge workload and I have to work on holidays. You didn't even take parental leave. Can't you take caregiver leave? Shall I try asking the company for help? Don't do something embarrassing. Even if you say that, your father is taking care of your mother while working, right? You're younger and stronger, so I want you to help. My father wants to do it, right? Not because he wants to, he's doing it because he has no choice. Please, just help a little bit. I can't. You married into my family, so can't you understand and accept it? It would be nice if you could at least consider it. Oh, I'm busy with work. Gotta go. Wait! We're not done talking yet. It's always about your convenience. Bill, Bill, it's urgent. Your mother collapsed and was taken to the emergency room. I need you to come to the hospital right away. What? I'm in the middle of work right now. Can't you handle it over there? The doctor says she's in critical condition. It's an emergency. Please leave work and come right away. What? My mother? That can't be true. She was just talking fine the other day. Are you serious? Can you come right away? Well, um... No, I can't. What? It's a matter of life and death. If you miss this opportunity, you may never be able to talk to her again. Please, I'm begging you. If I explain the situation, your boss will understand. It's your own parent's life that's at risk. Just a moment. I'll try asking. I'm sorry, it's still a no. Give up. Give up? Even though your own mother may die, and yet you prioritize work? It's not right as a human being. I didn't intend to marry someone like that. Try leaving early and see if I get fired. Fired? That's impossible. Your own parent is in critical condition. If you explain it properly, they will understand, right? 
If it's better for me or your father to talk to the company... No, no, if I do that, I'll lose my job. My company is quite exploitive in some ways. What will my boss say? How are we going to live if I lose my job? My father can't support us all. Is there really a risk of being fired for such a reason? I don't know much about your company, but anyway, please come to the hospital. It's the last chance to talk to your mother. Hmm, yeah. There's no time to hesitate or think. Even if you can't leave work early, please come straight to the hospital without working overtime, okay? Please, I'm begging you. Hey, Bill. It's already 7 o'clock. What are you doing? Work is supposed to be until 6, right? You should be arriving soon, right? Bill? Bill, where are you now? When are you planning to arrive here? There's no response. I'm getting worried. Oh, well, I'll try contacting the company directly. I know you wouldn't like it, but if your family appeals, they might approve your leave. I'll try negotiating. When I called the company, they said you've already left. What's going on? Where are you right now? If you've already left, that means you're on your way here, right? I'll wait a little longer. Hurry up! Bill? Bill! What are you doing and where are you? I've been trying to contact you so many times, but I can't reach you. What's happening? Your mother, she passed away. She wanted to see you. Your father and our son were there when she passed away. We all said goodbye to her. Even if you're busy with work, how could you not come at a time like this? It's not too late even now. Please, I'm begging you, come to the hospital! Bill, please contact me. Where are you and what are you doing? We've been waiting at the hospital since your mother passed away. It's been three hours already. Please, Bill. We can't stay at the hospital any longer. We have to go back for now. Your father is very tired and there are preparations for the funeral as well. There's been a lot going on. I'm tired too. Our son has fallen asleep as well. I just got home now. I was hoping maybe you would be here. But you're not at home either? Where could you have gone? In such a difficult time, not being able to see your own parent before their death. Could it be? Bill, did you get into an accident or something and that's why you can't contact me? It's unnatural that you don't call me when your own mother passed away. Is there a reason you can't contact me? Did you rush to the hospital because I urged you and then had an accident on the way? Oh, what should I do? Not just my mother-in-law, but you too, Bill. It's already dawn. I can't stop imagining the worst. I'm worried. I'm so tired. I'll rest for a bit. Bill, please be safe. Bill, I still can't reach you. Your mother's funeral is over. Something must have happened, right, Bill? I can't do anything because I can't reach you. Your father is in shock and weak, and he's taking all the time off work. There's a lot to do. I'll contact you again once things settle down. Please stay safe. Hey, Maureen! Oh, it's Bill. What do you want now? What do I want, you say? Explain what's going on! Shut up. I have nothing to explain to you. Did you say shut up? There's plenty for you to explain. First of all, what happened to my family's house? Why is it now an empty lot? And where the hell are you and our son? What about my parents, my mother and father? Are you so busy you forgot your mother's funeral? Your mother passed away. Ah, uh, right. I tried to take a day off for my mother's funeral, but a sudden meeting came up and my request was denied. Oh, I see. That's how it is. Never mind my mother, but where the hell are you guys? You don't even bother to tell your husband your whereabouts? We're not family, and I have no obligation to answer you. What? Is that how you talk to your husband? Don't make me laugh. You're the one who's joking. You didn't even bother to attend your own mother's funeral, frolicking around with some other woman like you're having the time of your life. 
without any word for a year. Don't you dare call yourself a husband now. Who do you think you are? You have no shame. What are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? What's with the pretending? I know all about it, so don't bother. I have no idea what you're talking about, so explain it. Fine, I'll tell you. It was that day one year ago, on the day of my mother-in-law's funeral. I was really worried about you and your father. I thought you might have had an accident on the way to the hospital. After the funeral, when things had settled down a bit, I contacted your company and talked to your boss. Talk to my boss? Don't go sticking your nose in things. I was worried at that time. I talked to your boss and I was surprised. They said you were at work every day and there was no noticeable change. They said you were going to call me back from your cell phone and that you refused to use the company's phone. Well, of course. Then why didn't you call me back? Do you have any idea how worried I was and how many times I called you? I sent you a message saying I can't come back due to a sudden business trip. Wasn't that enough? Just that one message? And it was a month after your mother's funeral. Do you think that's convincing? That's because I was busy with work. It wasn't just a business trip. A housewife like you, you wouldn't understand anything about work. What a bunch of lies. Your behavior was clearly suspicious. What are you talking about? When your parent falls ill and they're in critical condition, no matter how busy you are, you come to the hospital. Yet you didn't even bother to contact me. In the end, not only did you not see them while she was alive, you weren't even at your mother's funeral? Well, that's... I mean... You weren't in any accidents or troubles, and you've been going to work as usual. I discussed it with your father and decided to request an investigation. What? What do you mean by investigation? He happened to know someone who specializes in conducting background investigations, like a detective or something. It was convenient, so I asked that person for help. What? What are you doing? I'll sue you! Detectives are the kind of people who expose people's secrets so vulgar and low class. It's disgraceful of you to rely on such people. It's in bad taste coming up with such an idea in the first place. Oh, but it was your father who suggested this vulgar and low class idea, remember? What? I told you, we hired a detective your father knew, and he agreed to help us for only necessary expenses. So despite your attempts to hide it, we know all about your movements. What? Don't act so high and mighty. So you were hanging out at your mistress's vacation home, huh? Huh, <laughs> what nonsense. They just make up stories and rip people off with their fake detective work. Her name is Sophia, right? Well, Sophia is a common name, so it could be anyone. I don't know any woman like that. So you were having a good time with Sophia on the night your mother passed away and on the day of the funeral, huh? N- no I heard you tried to come home on the day of the funeral, but couldn't resist the temptation of your mistress and ended up not coming back. That's all a lie! Sophia's testimony. She proudly told me all about it. She said she was meeting you at the vacation home, even though she has a husband and kids of her own. Apparently, her husband is very wealthy. I don't know how attractive she is, but she must have spoiled you, skipping your own mother's funeral for that. And you lied to your company, too. I don't know. What are you talking about? Saying that you were having a fight with me and you were keeping your distance? Ignoring my calls on purpose? Your boss probably never thought you were actually commuting from your mistress's place, so he was fooled too, huh? Dishonest people sure are good at lying. Why are you messing around? Are you underestimating me? Hiring a detective to invade your husband's privacy. How petty can you be? I'm appalled. You're the one who created the situation, aren't you? If you had at least said goodbye to your mother, I wouldn't have gone this far, and neither would your father. If it was just a simple affair, your father wouldn't have gone to such extremes. I'm sure I may not have forgiven you. You've gone too far. I was on a business trip. I had been working overtime. I commuted from a hotel. Stop it. That's enough. No, wait. What about my home? What happened to my house? Your home? There's no such thing. I went back to my parents' house just now. It was a vacant lot. What on earth happened? We sold it, so it doesn't exist anymore. What? Are you surprised? The home you're talking about in my father-in-law's name, right? We cleared out the old home and your father sold the land. 
the old house was old and didn't hold that much value, but the prime location and huge area of land was appraised as being, as being very valuable by a real estate agent. Why, why did you sell it? What does this mean? To settle everything. Settlement? What the hell is that? Explain it to me. It's the settlement for what you did. After your father heard the report about you from the detective, he first apologized to me over and over again. I told him it wasn't his fault, but he kept apologizing. And then he sold his own house and gave me most of the money. What? It's in gratitude for taking care of his wife and as compensation for what his son did. That's what he told me when he said he would pay a large sum of money. That father, he's doing whatever he wants. It's normal for a wife to take care of her parents. I don't want to say too much because it sounds like I'm bad-mouthing my mother-in-law, but taking care of her was really tough. If she had accepted help from others a little more, the burden wouldn't have been so heavy. Before she passed away, she also had dementia. She would go to the bathroom almost every hour at night. Your father helped too, but he also had work, so I didn't want to burden him too much, you know? So I really had no time to sleep. I told you, but you didn't do anything. You said you were working even on holidays. But from that time on, were you staying at your lover's vacation home all the time? Enough already. Where did he go? Who are you talking about? Obviously, I'm talking about my dad. Tell me. You know where he is, right? He said he was cutting ties with his son and moved to a new place. I also moved out with the money my father gave me. I'm living happily with my son. We won't meet ever again. Tell me, where are you and my father? We promised each other not to tell anyone where we are. Our whereabouts is a secret. A secret? Are you kidding me? Enough. Just let me see my son. Technically, we're still married. And as a father, I have a right to see him. <laughs> are you serious? How funny. Have you forgotten what you did? What? What did I do? Could it be? One month after your mother's funeral, on the day you sent me the only message I received from you. Do you remember? Oh, I replied properly. As a husband, as a family, it was only natural for me to do what I did. Do you remember my reply at the time? What was it? If you continue to neglect our family like this, we'll get a divorce, you know. And so, I sent the divorce papers. Oh, come to think of it. Do you remember what you did? At first, it was meant to be a threat. Honestly, I thought if I sent the divorce papers, you would come back, so I sent them, but... W well the fact that it was sent to my company's address made me angry, too. It couldn't be helped, since I didn't know where you were. At that time, I thought it was retaliation. Retaliation? Yes, it was retaliation. But you signed the divorce papers and sent them back, right? I submitted them to the city hall the next day. The divorce was finalized. You abandoned your position as a husband and father. At that moment, I completely lost my patience with you. When I reported it to your father, he seemed to share the same opinion. He decided to cut ties. Really? My father? What about my mother? If she were the kind mother I remember, she might forgive me. Perhaps it doesn't feel real because you didn't attend the funeral? Your mother passed away while you were playing around with your mistress. My mother, what have I done? I'm sorry, mother, father. Maureen, I apologize to you too. It's too late now. But you've been good to me all this time, haven't you? P please, I'm sorry, I apologize. I want you to forgive me. I really did something terrible to you and to my father and mother too. I apologize and I want to remarry. I'm sorry, but I don't intend to forgive you. You did something you shouldn't have done. You try to behave modestly, but we can't go back. Be good to Sophia. Actually, I broke up with Sophia, so I reflected on my actions. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for that. You felt bad for your family and went back home to find nothing. That's why you contacted me? Are you willing to remarry? Like I said before, I have no intention of forgiving you. Do you think you might change your mind? No, I don't. You're taking advantage of my modest attitude. If the divorce is finalized, I have no obligation to support you and our son. I'll make sure to get back the living expenses during that time. I haven't received any living expenses from you. Huh? Don't mess with me. My salary has been deposited every month. You've been using that money to live, right? 
No, I haven't received any money from your bank account since the divorce was finalized. You didn't bother to check on that until now? Your wealthy lover must have been indulging you in luxury, huh? I see now why you prioritized your lover over your mother's funeral. That doesn't matter. If we're getting divorced, there are plenty of things we can discuss. If you neglect this, you'll end up losing out. Let's meet and talk once more. About child support and compensation. I don't need them. What? There's no way you don't need them, considering how much it costs to raise a child. I've received more than enough from your father. The amount you can get from selling your family's house is probably nothing compared to it. Or will it be enough to support our son? I've received more than you think. But more than that, I don't want to see you ever again. So that's it for us. Goodbye. Hey, wait. Don't contact me again. It's just a waste of time for both of us. I'm deleting your contact information. Since then, I haven't had any contact with him. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't because we don't know each other's whereabouts. I have a good relationship with my father-in-law. I hear about his well-being and occasionally he meets our son. My father-in-law is a good person and smart too. He seems to be managing well with the help of people around him. He's crazy about his grandson and buys him lots of toys every time we meet. I'm happy about it. And about Bill. Honestly, I don't care about him and don't want to know anything about him. But my father-in-law seems to be curious, so he had a detective investigate. The conclusion is quite funny. His mistress? Was her name Sophia? Her husband found out and it turned into a big mess. Bill said he broke up with his mistress, but in reality, it seems he ran away. When the husband found out about her infidelity, he got furious. He was quite upset. <laughs> He seems to be the president of a big company, and he can be scary when angry. He found out that Sophia was using the villa for Bill and spending money like water, and now it's turned into a legal issue. It seems the blame is being placed on Bill because Sophia can't take responsibility. So Bill fled to his parents' house and then came running back to me. Did he think he could get help from me? After neglecting our family for a whole year, he suddenly wants to come back because things got tough. That's too bad, isn't it? I can't help but laugh when I imagine him being chased by Sophia and her husband, and he's desperately running away. It's hilarious. Hey sis, how are you? I have something to tell you. My boyfriend and I have set a date for our wedding. I'll send you an invitation, so be there. Why me? There's no way I'll go. Don't be so cold again. <laughs> You've been mean since we were little. That's my line. I won't forgive you for what you've done to me. Wait, what? Are you still angry? There was nothing we could do. He didn't choose you, but me. Don't blame me for not getting chosen. I can't believe you say that. You always wanted everything I had, and this time, you stole my fiancé. Do you know, you must not steal something that belongs to someone else. Ah, uh, here we go again, a lecture by the good sister. I'll make my wedding as gorgeous as possible. I'll invite a lot of my friends and relatives and make it much more gorgeous than yours. As I said, I won't go. So don't bother to send me an invitation. Who in the world would give their blessing to someone who took their fiancé away from them? Let me say it again. I will never forgive you. You're so funny. As I told you, he's the one who chose me. I wanted to marry a man who is good-looking and rich. He is a doctor, so he meets requirements. And you know what? It's your fault for trying to get married before me. I couldn't believe you did that to your little sister. That's your true intention? You are such a... What? Don't be bossy. Because you're inferior to me in every way. You two weren't a good match. Did you really think you could marry him? No way. You might have loved him so much, but he didn't. And yet, you got all excited, misunderstood his true feelings, and got dumped. I feel sorry for you. Did you finish saying everything you wanted to say? 
If so, don't call me again. Also, I don't need an invitation letter. You're pretending to be tough. I'm sending you the invitation. We'll make it a great ceremony, so be sure to attend. Are you coming to the wedding? What? All of a sudden? Don't you remember that I asked you not to contact me again? It doesn't matter to me. Before that, I'm asking you if you're coming to the wedding or not. There's no way I'll attend. How can you say that after messing with my sister? And while you were engaged to me? I can't believe you hit on your fiancé's sister. I despise you from the bottom of my heart. It couldn't be helped because Julia was more attractive than you. To tell you the truth, I was more attracted to Julia, who is younger and prettier than you. I'm sorry, but you have to follow what your heart tells you. I know that you can't put me out of your mind, but I'm sorry, you'll have to get over me. I'm Julia's man now. This is really disgusting. Honestly, I don't feel anything about you. Can you please stop making weird mistakes? You're pretending to be strong again. You're reluctant to attend our wedding because you don't want to see me with another woman, aren't you? Besides, no one knows that we were dating, right? We didn't even tell our parents. So your attendance rounds off everything nicely. Why? You can just ignore me just like you always did and have the wedding? That's no good. We want to make our wedding perfect. If the bride's sister doesn't come, everyone would think something is going on, won't they? I know it's tough for you, but I want you to put up with this for us. I don't want to. Anyway, I won't be there for your wedding. I also don't need an invitation letter. Don't you love your sister? Because you're such a cold-hearted person, you can't get married. And you're not saying anything to people around us, are you? Again, we want this wedding to be a success. Don't get in our way by saying things you shouldn't to other people. What do you mean, things I shouldn't say? Please, don't contact me again. Whatever you say, I won't attend your wedding. That's enough. Do you know what you're saying? I'm the next director of the clinic which you're working for. The director is asking you to attend. You know what you'll deserve if you won't attend, don't you? Then just come to the wedding. I'm sorry to bother you. Dr. Anne, I heard you're leaving your job at this clinic, is it true? Dr. John, I'm sorry for not telling you. It is true. What? So the rumour was true? It's very sudden. What happened? I'm sorry for surprising you. It's not a big deal, but I'm leaving for various reasons. It hurts to lose a doctor like you who is so trusted by both patients and colleagues. Trying to find a replacement will be hard. I'm sorry for causing you trouble. I'll leave after using up my paid leave. Have you already found your next workplace? Actually, not yet. Things have been a little bit hectic. I see. I apologise to you all for causing trouble, but I don't want to work at the clinic anymore. I want to leave as soon as possible. You're always so responsible. I can't believe you would say that. We were saying that there must have been something serious. Well, I'm sorry for making you worry. No, this isn't something you should be sorry for. And I have one suggestion for you. Do you mind if I introduce you to the next workplace? What? Actually, my friend has known your excellence for a long time and has been trying to recruit you. What do you think? I'm hesitant to say this out loud, but you'll be treated and paid much better than this clinic. Really? I didn't expect this. Am I good enough to accept the offer? Are you kidding me? You're a wonderful doctor. My friend has been waiting for an opportunity to recruit you. If you don't have other choices yet, please take time to consider. Thank you so much. That really helps me. If there's anything else I can do for you, please let me know. Then I'll give you the details about the clinic later on. Thank you so much. I'll be waiting to hear the details. Hey sis, how are you? Did you get the invitation letter? Did you see it? You were surprised by its gorgeousness, weren't you? I asked a famous designer of my acquaintance to design it for us. 
What do you think about it? Don't you think it's great? I told you that you didn't have to send it to me. Didn't you hear what I said? Oh, it seems you received one. Then why didn't you tell me you got it? I don't need it. Anyway, listen to me. Our wedding will be such a great one. The dress is so gorgeous. I've ordered a custom-made dress from a famous designer. I'm young and pretty, right? So I looked good in every dress, and it took time to decide. Also, the venue is a luxury hotel where a lot of celebrities also held their weddings. I'll make our wedding so gorgeous, even the celebrities will be amazed. I invited a lot of people, so please come wearing appropriate clothes as a gorgeous bride's sister. I'm not going. How many times do I have to tell you? Why do you insist? Without you, our wedding won't be perfect. What do you mean? Without me, you should hold a wedding as you want. Why do you want me to be there? Oh, sis, you don't understand how your sister feels at all. Well, I love watching you feel mortified. Since we were little, I felt good seeing you cry by having everything stolen by me. This time, you got your fiancé stolen. Attending his gorgeous wedding might make you feel really bitter, so I'm very excited about it. Julia, you're such a... Well, but maybe you can't take it, because it's really embarrassing. Okay, if that's what you say, I'll attend. With my husband. What? Husband? Yes, with my husband. He's your relative, so there's no problem, right? I'll be there laughing and looking at you too with pity. What are you talking about? After getting your fiancé stolen, have you lost your mind? You've been single. I didn't tell you, but I got engaged recently. So please, prepare one more seat at the wedding. That's a lie. No, it's not. I didn't hear anything about that. Because I didn't tell you. Because you're like that. I asked our parents not to tell you. If you think it's a lie, ask them. That's just revenge for being dumped by your fiancé. You married a random guy, didn't you? No. There was a man who had secretly admired me for a long time. He told me how he felt towards me when I was heartbroken, and I'm with him now. Oh, really? It's okay, because no one is better than Roy. You're just a bad loser. That's not true. Actually, my husband is also a doctor, just like your fiancé. And the director of a clinic. That's a lie, just your imagination. It's not a lie. Anyway, please prepare an extra seat right next to me. I'm looking forward to it so much. Hey, you betrayed me. What? Contacting me all of a sudden? And what are you making a fuss for? Don't play dumb. You left the clinic, didn't you? Oh, did you find out today? You betrayer. We're having a lot of problems because of you. What do you mean? Not only you, but also many people have left. And we're short-handed. And all of them were very capable. We can't run the clinic under this condition. We'll be suffering from a slump in business. This is no time for a wedding. Oh my, I'm sorry to hear that. Don't play dumb. Everyone who left the clinic said, I was invited by someone to change jobs at a certain beauty clinic. You're responsible for this, aren't you? You're such a pitiful person. Don't cry to the person who left and try to manage by yourself. Stop acting big. Everything is happening because you've suggested everyone leave the clinic, isn't it? Stop doing this in revenge for being dumped. And don't leave the clinic. You can still change your mind. Come back to our clinic. It might be awkward for you to see my face at work, but I'll give everyone an extra pay if you decide now. So come back with everyone who left. Are you serious? And I think you're misunderstanding. The reason I left your clinic is not because it was awkward to work with you. It was because I got married. Didn't Julia tell you? I got married. So don't contact me like this again so casually. You left because... You're married? Yes, that's right. And I may take this opportunity to tell you this. 
there is no benefit for me to work at your clinic. The clinic where I'm working now provides very good salary that's impossible for you to pay and very good treatment. No way, you're lying. Which clinic is it? Tell me. You know Dr. John, don't you? He is a doctor who was working at your clinic? His parents own a beauty clinic and he recently became the director of the clinic. And now I'm the wife of a clinic director. What? The wife of a clinic director? After we broke up, I started dating Dr. John and we got married. It seemed that John has liked me for a long time. When I told him that I was leaving the clinic, he worried about me a lot. And when I told him about what you and Julia did to me, he declared his love, saying, Would you go out with me with marriage in mind? He cares about me more than you did. Oh no, that can't be true. It's true. <laughs> and when the other staff got to know the story, they told everyone that Dr. Anne will transfer to a clinic that treats her better. So I explained honestly. Then everyone got interested in John's clinic, and they also transferred. I knew that you were responsible. Um... How could it be? This was what your clinic has brought upon itself. I tell you from a former employee's perspective, your clinic has low pay and poor treatment. It's made everyone tense and the atmosphere was terrible. No one wanted to work at such a place, right? That doesn't mean it's fair to do it this way. Do you think it's ethical? You're talking to me about ethics? But how about you? A person who had cheated on his fiancée with her sister can tell me about ethics? You need to rethink your behaviour first. Everyone left your clinic because, instead of improving the workplace as the next director, you were just sitting on your title. You're the one who is responsible for everything. Don't act arrogant. Anyway, thank you. What? Because I broke up with you, I can be with a great husband now. What? So don't contact me again. Missed call. Hey, pick up the phone. We haven't finished talking yet. Anne, answer me. Hey sis, I didn't know this. Our wedding has been ruined. Oh, what happened? You told me that you were going to have a gorgeous wedding, right? What? You made this happen? Why do I have to make our wedding less gorgeous because Roy's clinic is under a slump in business? All of my dresses are cancelled and the venue is very small. Why do I have to give up everything? Is it because you're the wife of the next director? Don't talk to me like that. Why do you live in a high-rise condo? Oh, you knew. I saw you entering a high-rise condo a couple of days ago. Why only you? That's unfair. Give me Dr. John. I'm prettier than you, so he'll like me more than you. I'll give Roy back to you. Are you trying to steal John this time? Unfortunately, that's impossible. He loves me from the bottom of his heart. And however pretty the appearance is, it can't be helped if the person has an impure heart like you. What did you say? You're too cocky to be my sister. Anyway... I'm looking forward to your wedding. Missed call. Hey, pick up the phone. Missed call. Hey, sis. In the end, the wedding was held in a very simple manner. Julia was not happy about the whole thing and the atmosphere of the ceremony was terrible. My ex-fiancé succeeded the hospital from his father, but it seems he is suffering from a deficit operation. Because of that, Julia can't live the gorgeous life that she'd expected, and she's complaining, saying, This isn't something I imagined. Julia has spent money buying all kinds of brands due to the daily stress. But Roy found out about it, and they're now talking about divorce, even though it's right after their marriage. She sometimes complains to me that she has to pay a large amount of money, including the debt, if they got divorced. But... That has nothing to do with me. Is this Fiona's account? Oh, yes, but... Right! My guess was right! This picture is your profile, right? You're so plain and have no presence. Such a common type of person. 
I was wondering what type of woman gets cheated on, but I guess I was right. Um, we've never met before, have we? I don't deserve to have my appearance judged by you. Who are you? Besides, what do you mean by cheating? I'm Lucy. I'm marrying your fiancé. I looked for your contact information in his phone's history. Wait a minute. I don't understand the word marrying your fiancé. Are you playing dumb? It's about Wade. Wade? Yes, I'm going to marry Wade. Can I confirm? What is Wade's last name? Rogers. It's the same name as my fiancé. I've told you many times. I went out of my way to preface this with your fiancé, so who else could it be? Wade Rogers is going to marry me. Hey, what are you talking about? I've been dating Wade for years. We've already set the date for our wedding. We've given out the invitations, preparations are mostly done, and all we have to do is wait for the day. No one would come this far and suddenly marry someone else? What are you trying to do joking like that? What am I trying to do? Wade says he wants to marry me. Do I need anything else besides that fact? Come on, the wedding is in two months. Don't disturb us. Oh my, you're getting so worked up. You've been dating him for years and you didn't even know that he was cheating on you? How could you be so blind? There is no way he would cheat on me. I've always believed in him. Rather than believing him, I guess you just didn't understand his expression and feelings properly. I had to listen to him goof on you every time we went out on a date. What? We did that? We're half cohabitating right now, so I can melt away his stress anytime. He's really relaxed, except for when he's in contact with you. I can't believe you're almost living together. Is that why we haven't been in touch or dated much lately? You really are blind. I wonder if Wade really wanted to marry you. What? Wait. You were on the verge of getting married to a high-income elite man, but you were intercepted at the last minute. Your marriageable age is about to end, and you can't help but feel miserable that you don't even realize your fiancé has been taken. So I have a request for you. Wade proposed to me. He doesn't have feelings for you anymore, and he says he loves me and wants to make me happy. Wade and I are serious about this relationship, so will you please step back? But I've only heard from you for now. I have to hear it from Wade himself. Whether you agree or not, he no longer has feelings for you. I get it. Well, I'll try to get in touch with him directly and talk to him. So why don't you give me some time? Yes, I don't mind. Wade says he doesn't want to be involved with you anymore, so I don't know if you can talk about it. But if that makes you feel better, go ahead. Hey! When are you going to break up with him? I want to get married to Wade as soon as possible. I've been calling Wade, but he hasn't answered or responded to my emails and he doesn't call me back. I want to know how he really feels. Is that your true intention? Maybe you just don't want to let him go because he's a good catch and you're trying to prolong the breakup until the wedding. There's no point in doing that if he doesn't show up to the wedding. I'm not that low-minded. I just wanted to talk it over and make sure it's all settled since I once vowed to share my life with him. Oh, really? Wade seems to be tired of your phone calls. Hey... You said you are almost living together. Is Wade there with you now? Yes. After I talked to you the other day, we started living together in earnest. I'm so happy we could be together all the time. We can nurture love every day. Are you still going to try to tie him down? I don't mean to tie him down. I just can't accept that it ends without hearing anything from him. 
I don't want to get angry with him. I just want to talk to him once. Why don't you ask why he avoids talking to me so much? Wade said, I don't want to talk to Fiona anymore. I want her to stop calling. That's what he says. Huh. Right. I wanted to at least ask him what he didn't like about me. If we can't even talk about it, then there's nothing more I can do. I'm not convinced, but I'm breaking up with Wade. Yes! You're finally free, Wade! Anyone would be fed up if you're so persistent. Yes. I'm sorry I didn't get to talk to him, but I'm ending our relationship. From now on, he's all yours. Well, maybe I'll buy an engagement ring. Missed call. What is it? I don't want to talk to you anymore. Hey, I know it's you. Why did you have to do that? How come Wade's parents know that you guys broke off your engagement because we had an affair? They were so mad at us. You've already broken up with Wade, so you're a stranger. Stay out of our lives. They asked me, it was close to the wedding, so why did you two suddenly break up? So I just answered honestly. As I said before, you guys cheated on me, so don't take it out on me. You could have just said that you were the one who broke the engagement. Don't make it difficult for me. I didn't break the engagement, and I had no reason to. You're the one who tried to force the trouble on me just now. Shut up! You have nothing to lose, so you can carry that much. Why bother contacting your ex-fiancé's parents? His parents were so kind to me that I just wanted to say goodbye. Besides, since they were going to attend the wedding, it's natural to greet them with the loss of the ceremony. You say like that, but you are using Wade's parents to tear us apart, aren't you? I've already told you I don't want to talk to you. I'm not interested in you anymore, and I don't want to get involved. So much that it never occurred to me to even harass you. Don't you think it's a terrible trick to steal someone else's fiancé? Wade and I really liked each other. There's nothing wrong with that. I am stunned. You just didn't want to let go of a good catch because Wade is kind, handsome, and well-earned, right? No. Not only on the outside, but I loved him seriously. You say that, but you met Wade on such good terms that you cheated on him to get him even if it meant tearing things up with me, didn't you? Oh, what are you talking about? Don't be kidding. Yes. Yes, I understand. Like I said, I'm not interested in you or Wade anymore. Don't contact me anymore. Be happy. Missed call. Missed call. Hey! What kind of nerve do you have to ignore me? What? I was at work. How many times do I have to tell you there's nothing to talk about anymore? Yes, I don't even want to think about you if I could. So why is the wedding canceled? What? What are you talking about? I'm asking why you canceled the ceremony. If you hadn't canceled, I could have had a gorgeous wedding for free. Um, what kind of thought process is that? Wade and I broke up, so it's normal to cancel, isn't it? But just because the bride has changed doesn't change the fact that Wade is getting married. Oh, maybe you couldn't allow us to be the ones happy. That's why you reported it to Wade's parents and canceled our ceremony. You're a really bad person. He cheated on you because you have such a personality. Huh, feel free to say that I have a bad personality or not. But for now, I understand how stupid you are and how little common sense you have. Huh? Oh my god. You should think a little more about your position. You seem to want to justify what you did, but to others, it's just cheating. And it ruined people's lives. Oh, so what? If it makes Wade and I happy, that's fine. Yes. So there's nothing wrong with asking two happy people for alimony, right? I'm going to charge you alimony for cheating, and I'll charge Wade alimony and cancellation fees. What? <laughs> I've already assumed that. That's not going to get in our way. Be 
because Wade is well paid. We can afford to pay alimony. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. I'll contact you through my lawyer later on. Yes, go ahead. I got my bill. Oh, I'm glad it arrived safely. I wonder if you're satisfied with the amount? I haven't seen the amount. I haven't opened the seal because Wade will pay it quickly and it is over. Should I give this to him? Yes. I think it says the payment is due at the end of the next month. Don't forget to pay. Well, as a housewife, I'll do that properly. Oh, did you quit your job? Of course. Wade works hard to earn money, so it's my job to keep the house clean and make delicious food to welcome him home. Yes, but you should also look for a job. What are you talking about? I don't need to do that. We can afford to live on Wade's income alone, and we have savings, so we don't have any problems. Oh, don't you know Wade's current situation when you're about to get married? He's going to be fired soon. Huh? What are you talking about? He can't get fired. He's a promising elite employee with a confirmed promotion. Well, yes, he was a manager at a big company not long ago, and he was earning a lot of money, but he was embezzling the company's money. They found out about it, and now he's demoted. He'll lose his job in a few days. That's a lie! Embezzlement? I didn't know that! He has too much pride, so maybe the reason his income seemed so high was because he embezzled so much. Because of his personality, I don't think he would bother to tell you honestly that he was embezzling company's money. I think the company is probably considering a court case or claim for compensation by now. I don't care if it's alimony to you, but even paying the company? With that in mind, why don't you open the bill envelope? Well, that's about it. What is this amount? I'm already laughing. You can't buy love and happiness with money at all, can you? I can't believe you think money equals happiness. What a sad person. <laughs> really? I consulted with a lawyer and asked him to calculate the average price for infidelity engagement. Can't you pay? You were laughing so much. Oh, well, I can't afford to pay such a ridiculous amount for a wedding cancellation. This is absolute padding. It's an illegal charge. No, it's the exact amount as the cancellation fee. I told you, Wade is too full of pride. He wanted the ceremony to be gorgeous, and he was eager to add options to this and that. And the cancellation was just before the ceremony, so it's a fair price. I can send you a copy of the receipt since I'm paying temporarily. Really? If we pay this amount as it is, we may end up with a negative bank account. And if he loses his income and title as an executive of a big company... Yes, I'm sure you'll lose everything and it's going to be tough in the future. You... You make light of it because it's someone else's business. It's completely different from what I heard. If you knew, why didn't you tell me sooner? You were so arrogant to me and ruined my life, you know? I'm not going to extend a helping hand to an enemy. I'm a bad person, right? Well, you're not smart, so I'll tell you what. This kind of thing is called what goes around comes around. Don't make fun of me. See you soon. Hey! Hey, wait! Lucy said she can afford alimony, so I sent her a bill to have all the alimony and cancellation fees to be paid in full. I heard that they were broke at that point, but the company sued them for embezzlement and they were asked for damages. Apparently, the money he was embezzling was to spend on dates with Lucy and to show that he had larger savings than he really had which would mean she was half complicit in the embezzlement. Lucy had quit her job, so she had no source of income, so the two of them ended up in debt. It was unintentional, but by telling Wade's parents about the cause of the breakup, they are working hard every day to pay back the money under his parents' supervision. They seem to really want to get married at the risk of cheating, but for some reason, they are not officially married yet. I guess the marriage talk will be postponed until they can pay off the debt. 
So much that who knows when they will pay it all back. Mary, where are you now? I'm home. Thank you for your hard work. Have you finished your work already? Mary, is there anything you're hiding from me? Hiding something? Oh, are you talking about the bag I bought last month? Because it was a new collection. Are you mad because I bought it without you asking? It was a little expensive. I'm sorry. Don't play dumb with me. Huh? You know that's not what I'm talking about. What do you mean? There's no point pretending you don't know. Aren't you with a man now? Huh? What are you talking about? I know you're with your lover right now. Huh? Just hang on. Why do you say that? Because I took a paid leave to find out. Paid leave? Yeah. Actually, I've been off work the last two weeks to find out about you. Huh? I've been collecting evidence that you were cheating on me. Hey, what are you talking about? You've been checking? Me? Oh, yes. I hired a detective to investigate everything about the scene of the affair and who the guy is. I know everything. That's terrible. Why did you do that? Why did you lie to me? You lied to me pretending to go to work. You're the worst. What are you talking about? You're the one cheated on me, right? You're the one who lied to me. You betrayed me. Meeting a guy while I was at work. You're the worst woman ever. No, it's not like that. How can you say that? I already know you were cheating. There's no excuse. Ken, no, listen. What should I listen to? I did meet a man, but no. The guy kept pushing me to meet him. I got scared and I couldn't help it. Mary. But you're the only one I love. I don't really like him. But still, I hurt you. I'm really sorry. This will never happen again. Mary, are you sure? Yes, I promise. So please, forgive me. Sure. I've been busy with work lately, and I may have neglected you. We weren't communicating with each other, partly because I was working all the time. No, you were just doing your job. You did nothing wrong. I'm the one to blame. I should have talked to you right away. Mary, okay, I'll forgive you this time. Really? Yes. Thank you, Ken. I love you so much. Well, I'm going home early today, so let's have a date at a restaurant together for the first time in a long time. Lovely. Okay, I'll be dressed up waiting for you. Yeah, see you at home. Thanks, Ken. I'll be waiting. Mary. Why don't you answer my phone? What are you doing? Are you out somewhere? I'm sorry I couldn't answer the phone. A good colleague invited me on a trip during the day. All of a sudden? Yes, I was really suddenly invited. So, I'm sorry... I don't know when I will be back. I'll be away from home for a few days. I'm really sorry. You didn't say anything about this this morning. It was really sudden. Isn't that too sudden? I'm sorry I went without letting you know, but I'll be back in a few days, all right? Even so, I want you to at least contact me. I'm sorry. Who are you with? Is it your good colleague? A good colleague. But you may never have met this person. We've become friends recently, so I don't know if you've heard me talk about it much. Recently? Yeah, we happened to talk to each other and we got along well. Could it be... You suspect me of cheating on you again? No, 
I just wanted to make sure. I'm sorry to disturb your trip. Leave the house to me and relax once in a while. Thank you, I will. I'm sorry I couldn't get in touch with you. I'll be back the day after tomorrow. The trip was fun, but it's not half as much fun without you. I got souvenirs for you. I miss you so much. Do you? Miss me? Hen, what's wrong? You're always good at lying. What's wrong? Why didn't you just tell the truth? The truth? What do you mean? Ken, what happened? Did something bad happen? What happened all of a sudden? Where are you now? Now? I'm still at my hotel. Why? That's a lie. You're still with your boyfriend, aren't you? Huh? I already know. Ken, I don't know what you're talking about. I checked your search history on your computer while you were away. Huh? My computer? Why would you do that? I always tell you not to look at that. There it was. The exchange between you and your fling. Exchange? Tom. That's his name, isn't it? I also saw an email confirming your travel reservation. You had a reservation for two, and a long time ago. It was a complete lie that you were suddenly invited. What is happening? Explain to me properly. Explain? Just as you saw it. What? Yes, I was on a trip with Tom. Are you happy now? You admit it. Yes, so what? So? A man can overlook an affair. What? Forgive me for that. I can't forgive you. Are you sure? What? If you're not that big of a man, you can't take over my mother's company. What are you talking about? You know that my mom is the president of a major apparel company, right? If you make a fuss about my infidelity here, you won't be able to take over the company. If you just let it slide, you will be able to take over my mom's company and become the next president in the future. So, can you take such an attitude towards me? Is that your true intention? Mom likes you. So, I'm sure you'll be the next president. You can take over the company and I can do as I please. I think we should do what's best for both of us right now. You mean to forgive you for cheating on me? Yes. I've played the good girl for you, but I can't do this anymore. If you want to take over my mom's company, pretend you never knew about this. That's your nature, isn't it? Yes, I told you. It is. I'm not going to let you ruin my private life anymore. What a woman! What are you talking about? You're going to take over the company, right? Isn't that enough? Huh? I wish I could punch myself for seriously marrying you. Why? You can't be the president? You don't say anything and just listen to me. That's all you need to do. Easy, right? What the hell do you think I am? If you don't agree with me, I'll divorce you. You wouldn't want that, would you? Because you're the next president. Can you miss your chance? I know it was your dream to have your own company. That's going to happen, so shut up and follow me. Forget it. I'm glad you understand. Sorry, but Tom is coming after this today. Huh? Ah, your cheating partner? Yes, so don't come home today. Tom doesn't want to go home either. That's why I'm going to let him stay tonight. Are you going to stay with him at my house? It's my house too, isn't it? Don't get it wrong. So, you should stay at a hotel today. Please. Again? You've been seeing him almost every day lately, haven't you? So what? You play around with your cheating partner all you want every day and you don't feel anything about it? Don't you feel bad for me or anything? Not at all. Not at all? Are you serious? Because my mom bought this apartment. 
That means it is in her name. Can you interfere with Mom's property? Mom bought this for me, so I'm free to use it however I want, right? Or what? Do you have any complaints? I've said it before, if you're going to tell me what to do, it's a divorce. You can't, can you? You don't have that much courage. You'd better not disobey me. I see. I just wanted you to know that. Are you really sure? What do you mean? I'm just telling the truth. Am I saying something wrong? Okay. Divorce me. Huh? What are you saying? I ask you for a divorce. I can't be with you anymore. Hey, you're not serious, right? Yes, I'm serious. I can't live like this anymore. What about your position as the next president? If you divorce me, you won't be able to fulfill that dream. It's your dream, isn't it? I don't want the position of president with you. I don't want any part of it. What are you talking about? If Mom finds out that you're divorcing me, you won't be able to stay in the company. Is that what you want? I don't mind. If I can divorce you, I'll quit my job. Think carefully. What are you going to do now? I'll look for a new job. Just... Just... If there's anything left in my mind... What? You don't want to leave me? Then... Working with your mother was not hard. Actually, it was fun. So I may regret that I inconvenienced her in this way. What's that? I don't know what you mean. You're not serious, are you? Don't make fun of me. I'm not. I'm serious. You're the one who brought this up. If you disobey me, it's divorce. That's true, but... So that's it. Okay. I don't mind getting divorced. But don't tell Mom about my infidelity. You don't want to be in trouble, do you? I'm going to get my things now, so I'll bring the divorce papers with me as well. Huh? Now? Yes. Sign the divorce papers. Ah, oh, okay. Hey. Ken. What is this? What? Not what? What is $67,000 in alimony? Don't be kidding. I'm not kidding. I told you, didn't I? I was investigating your infidelity. So what? I think that $67,000 is reasonable. Why would that be? You had an affair for a long time. You've been dating that guy called Tom for a long time. Huh? That's not all. Not only this time, but you had relationships with several other guys. Why do you say that? When I exposed the affair and when I said I wanted a divorce, you didn't feel any remorse at all. In fact, you even told me to forgive you for cheating. You were the one who told me to turn a blind eye to the wife's infidelity, right? That is... You're the one who said that and continued the affair. The message remains and there is enough evidence. Certainly from the market point of view, it may be a high amount of alimony, but from your attitude, I think it's a reasonable amount. No, it's not. Listen to me. I don't want to listen. If you have any complaints, contact me through a lawyer. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, okay. I will pay the alimony. I don't think you have that kind of money. If I ask Mom, she'll pay you right away. Really? Huh? What? What do you mean? You've already been abandoned by your beloved mother. Huh? Why do you say that? I actually told your mom about your infidelity. Why? Why did you tell my mom? Because she took care of me, so... And she was disappointed in you. She won't help you even if you were in trouble. Oh, no! Why is this happening? You must have put ideas into my mom's head. I just told her the truth. You're cheating on multiple guys besides me. Not only that, but I also told her how you told me to shut up if I wanted to be president of the company. And your mother just put her head in her hands. It's a lie. Because mom has always listened to anything I have to say. 
I guess she is out of love for her cheating daughter. That's... When I told my mother-in-law about the affair, she cried and apologised to me. She said she was sorry for her bad daughter, sorry for hurting me. Not defiant like you. Mom apologised? Yeah, she sincerely apologised. Then that's fine. Ha. Huh. Mom apologised, didn't she? Then I hope you'll forgive me. Why won't you forgive me? I can't believe you're asking for alimony. It's the worst. What are you talking about? I'm angry at you, Mary, not at my mother-in-law. I can't forgive you just because my mother-in-law apologised. You're the one who should apologise to me. Do you understand? What? I married you. Huh? I married you and let you have good dreams, so isn't that enough? I don't think you can ask me for anything more. Don't you feel sorry for what you've done? You! You're the one who should feel sorry for what you've done to me. Huh? Oh, I see. Then I'll tell you what. Huh? What? The apartment you live in now was in your mother's name, wasn't it? So what? Are you going to ask me for it? Nope. She already cancelled the apartment there. Huh? Hey, what's that? Really? Yeah, I heard it directly from my mother-in-law, so it's true. Maybe you can live there for another week. One week? That's a lie. Why do I need to lie? So you'd better get out of there as soon as possible. Because not only alimony, but you will have to pay an even larger amount of rent. Ah, oh, no. What should I do if I get kicked out of here? Come on. I don't know about that. Why don't you get help from the guys you're cheating on? Oh, but... But... What? Of course, I also ask the men for alimony. What? Of course, right? If there's a guy who pays that alimony and takes care of you, you can have him take care of you. But until you pay me alimony, I'll never let you or the men get away with it, so don't even think about running away. If you run away, alimony will increase more and more. You're not such a child that you don't know what will happen then, are you? Hey, wait a minute, Ken. Well then. Please, we could start over. Hey, Ken, listen to me. Goodbye. Later, when Mary couldn't see the prospect of paying off the large amount of alimony, she cried to all of her cheating partners and begged them to help her pay. But after a series of upheavals, all of the cheating partners gave up on her and had ended their relationships. Mary, who has been living on her mother's pocket money, naturally has no savings. Eventually, Mary ended up borrowing a lot of money to pay alimony, so she rented a small wooden apartment and worked part-time from morning till night. Now, she can't afford to play around, and she seems to be busy paying alimony and making ends meet. Ray! Ray! Answer right now! Yes, I apologize for keeping you waiting. You're still as slow as ever! What business do you have today? Did you go to greet your fiancé and father? And what of it? Your fiancé, what's his name? You mean Danny? Yes, give me Danny's contact information. Wh why? Just tell me already! The reason doesn't matter, does it? It does matter. Please tell me your purpose. If you have something to say to him, I'll let him know. Otherwise, there's no need to tell you. He's going to marry you, isn't he? Yes, but what's it to you? The man who becomes your husband will be my brother-in-law. He will become family, you know. Isn't it normal to want to know the person's contact information? That is... If you get it, just tell me already! But Camila, if you have something to discuss with him, please tell me. I apologize, but I cannot tell you his contact information. Ugh, it's so frustrating! You can't tell me? Is there a reason for that? Are you trying to hide something from me? Explain it so I can understand! Camila... You always have to be above me, don't you? Well, it's natural, isn't it? I'm the older sister, you're the younger sister. It's been that way since we were little. 
You always took away my favorite toys. No matter how hard I tried, you never acknowledged me. You always complained about everything I did. So what? What does that have to do with anything? Right now, I'm asking you to give me your fiancé's contact information. I don't want to hear your old stories. So, I refuse. Because I don't want him to be treated the way I was. I don't want you to meet him if possible. <laughs> don't make me laugh so much. Complaining about toys being taken away, being treated like a child. I just want to know what kind of person is going to be your husband. He's probably just the third class ordinary guy anyway. No, that's not true. He's- <sighs> Just be quiet. I know he's a worthless man for choosing you as his partner. As your older sister, I just wanted to see what kind of person I'll be dealing with as my brother-in-law. It's not like I'm trying to harass you or anything. Why do you go so far as to be hostile towards me? I'm not being hostile, really. But speaking of your fiancé, what kind of person is he? What do you mean? You can't say. Is he so embarrassing that you want to hide him that bad? You don't think I know? You took advantage of my absence to come and say hello, didn't you? That's... You checked my schedule with my subordinates at work and went to see our parents when I wasn't around, right? Well, yes. I apologize. I did set a date to go greet them when you weren't around. Finally! You admitted it, huh? I was actually at home that day because my plans changed. Of course, I was hiding and watching his behavior. As expected, he doesn't seem to be much of a man, right? Yes, you're right. Ray, when you get married, go somewhere far away. I won't go. It's already been decided that he will work at Father's company. We'll be seeing you even after we get married. I thought you'd finally get married and leave the house. I'm gonna kick you out. So, I'm still in the way, huh? <laughs> Just kidding. Really? Uh, by the way, when is the wedding? It's in 10 days. Um, Camila. What is it? Don't do anything weird, okay? Weird? Like what? No, nothing. Will you come to the wedding? Of course. I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad to hear that. Camila! Are you still drunk, Camila? What's your problem? What was that earlier? What? You interrupted the wedding. Coming in with a white wedding dress while we were exchanging vows? It's such an inappropriate and outrageous behavior for you. And on top of that, you were drunk. Oh, come on. I'm sorry, okay? Are you still drunk? It's supposed to be a happy day. Well, wasn't it entertaining? You meant it as entertainment? You caused a commotion and harassed the guests. In the end, you were kicked out of the venue by father, right? Were you trying to ruin the wedding? Father was furious. Mother was laughing, though. She understood it was just entertainment, right? But no one else was laughing. Not even relatives or friends. Not even our father. Father? That's not good. I was just trying to liven things up, you know. So true. It was like a rehearsal for my own wedding. I mean, I should be getting married soon too, right? I was just thinking what kind of dress to wear at my own wedding in a fancy venue, and I got so excited thinking about it. That's why you acted that way. I'm sorry for my behavior. You're my sister, so you'll forgive me, right? Rehearsal, you say? No matter what your intentions were, father was furious. Even if you're his daughter, he said he couldn't forgive you. Father wouldn't really be that angry with me. After all, I'm the one who's going to inherit his company as his real daughter. It has nothing to do with you, a complete stranger who was abandoned as a baby. Yes, it's true that I was abandoned as a child. We're not blood related. But father and mother who raised me with love as their own are my family. You can think that way as much as you want. In reality, it's me who shares the blood connection. I'm the only one. You're just a spare for when something happens to me. Yes, I don't care if I'm your replacement, but I won't forgive your behavior at the wedding. What difference does it make if you don't forgive me? I don't care about you at all. Just do your best so you won't be abandoned by your fiancé. What do you mean? If he works for father and leaves you, you will have no relationship with our family. You got married and left home, so of course, right? What? What do I have to do for you to recognize me as family? I've been trying so hard all this time. Your efforts are worthless. It's something commoners do. Just do your best not to be abandoned, okay? Camila! You're so noisy. Do you need something? 
What are you thinking? Whatever I'm thinking is none of your business. Don't interfere. It's not just my business. Are you trying to seduce my husband? Please stop. I'm going to tell father. <laughs> what are you saying now? Did your husband say something? He didn't say anything. He knows his place. Then how do you know? Are you just trying to pick a fight? It's not a false accusation. He was unusually drunk last night, sleeping on the sofa. He kept mumbling in his sleep. So what? It's your husband's sleep talking. It's none of my concern. I don't have time for this. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but sometimes he said Camila. Maybe he has a mistress with that name? Cheating right after getting married? How daring. It's not like that. Even if he were in trouble, he wouldn't say anything to me. But I knew there was something, so I checked his work bag. My, my. I can't believe you would go through someone's bag, even if it was your husband. How vulgar. I don't want to think of you as my sister. So did you find anything? In his bag, there were harassing flyers and a large amount of documents relating to handling complaints. You did all this, didn't you? Do you have any evidence for that? Yes, I do. I didn't want to, but I used father's authority and confronted the people at his company. They admitted that Camila's subordinates were responsible for the harassing flyers and the vicious emails of complaints. They even confessed to using it as leverage to threaten him. Threaten? They told him to choose Camila and abandon me if he didn't want to suffer any more harm. When I heard that, I couldn't believe my ears. Is that really true? It's the truth. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? We may not be blood related, but we're family. Why would you do such terrible things? Because you looked so happy. I can't stand to see that expression on your face. It makes me sick. How dare you, a dirty orphan, be married and happy before me? I will never forgive you. You're a complete mistake. A mistake? Yes, a mistake. You, a filthy abandoned child of unknown origin, are not family to us. So, you tried to steal him away from me? Yes. I wanted to ruin your happiness. You, a despicable orphan, should be groveling in the dirt and bowing down to us. Just to make me suffer? Tormenting him for such a stupid reason. I can't believe it. I despise you. Say whatever you want. If you would just disappear from my sight, I wouldn't have to waste any more time on you. Disappear? Quit your job and go away somewhere far away. That man, too. So that's what you want. That's what I'm considering, too, ever since the wedding. Yes, clever for you. I don't like it, but I can't bear to see him continue to break down. I apologize to father, but if that stops your harassment... Is that so? So when? When will you quit your job and go somewhere far away? With this, the next president of the company will be decided as me. My wish has finally come true, hasn't it? I couldn't be happier. Do you really... Do you really hate me that much, Camila? Despite all my efforts to please you since we were children, why do you hate me so much? Well, you see, it's because you're more talented than me. The next president of the company is me. That's already been decided. I can't have someone who's more capable than me getting in my way. So, I want you to go somewhere unknown. I've never liked you, the way you excel at everything. I used to be a real crybaby. I knew I couldn't get in the way of father or you. It's the result of my constant efforts. You have always been talented since childhood, excelling in both academics and sports. But if you don't work hard without relying on talent, you will lose to someone who has worked hard. Don't speak so arrogantly. I'm the one who stands at the top. I'm the only daughter of a major conglomerate's chairman, you know. I'm guaranteed a position without even trying. Effort is something only poor people do. I've always hated how you worked hard and received praise from father and mother. It just makes me furious. I understand. I don't know what father will say, but I will quit the company and move away. I will cut ties with you. Oh, really? I'm glad. So when are you moving? Within this month. Even without you, I'll grow the company on my own. Just watch from afar somewhere. Ray, you still haven't moved yet? You're still as indecisive as ever. Moving requires a little more preparation. I'm currently in the process of finding a new place, so could you wait a little longer? By the way, I know it sounds crazy, but is it true that you're talking to a lawyer about me? 
Yes. I'm consulting with a lawyer about how my sister is harassing my husband. You shameless! It's absurd to talk to a third party about family issues. Don't you think it's more absurd to stalk your sister's husband? Turning to a lawyer because you can't solve the problem yourself? Sounds like something a stupid commoner would do. You're the worst. If you're going this far, I'll get even. Get even? I'll tell all my friends about it. Um, I don't think that would be considered revenge. In fact, your insanity will just spread to everyone. Although I feel like everyone already knows. <laughs> You're so annoying! I'm going to spread it around. You should be ashamed. Anyway, Ray. Yes, Camila? You're going to convince your husband. Convince him? For what? To go out with me, of course. What are you talking about? If that man doesn't obey me, I'm going to ruin your reputations. Are you okay with that? Feel free to do as you please. Is it okay to lose your reputation? The people at the company and our friends know us sisters well. Hmph. <laughs> You'll lose that calm soon enough. Oh right. There's one more thing. What now? I might be getting engaged. It looks like a marriage proposal will be decided soon with the second son of a big company. How about that? Are you surprised? Yes, I am. Camila, while you're about to get engaged, you were trying to get your hands on my husband? I don't understand what you're thinking. Of course. It's just another way to harass you. Now you lose your place. You're unbelievable. Do you think it's okay to cause trouble for those around you just to harass me? Of course it's okay. I come from a noble family and I'm an outstanding person. I can do whatever it takes to achieve my goals. Both you and your husband are foolish. You should know whose side to take when you think about it for a minute. Your husband is such a stupid man for not obeying me. Say whatever you want. If you don't change that attitude, you'll face the consequences. Oh, Ray! Long time no see! Camila? It's been two years, hasn't it? Are you doing well? I'm doing well, but do you have any business with me? It's not that big of a deal, but I heard rumors about you, you know? Hmm... They say you and your husband started a company together. It's probably nothing special, but I was just curious about how things are going lately. As your older sister, I'm worried, you know? Be grateful! You don't need to worry about me, Camila. It's none of your business. The company is doing well. Is that all you wanted? If that's all, I'm busy, so excuse me. W wait a minute! Can't you believe that I'm actually worried about you? Thank you for your concern, Camila. Well then, that's all for now. I've been telling you to wait, haven't I? I asked about your recent updates, so you should ask about mine, too. Honestly, you have no common sense. Yes, yes. So, Camila, how have things been for you lately? Are you talking about the company? Of course it's going well. Thanks to me, of course. And also, my engagement with the second son of a major corporation is going well, too. Everything is going smoothly. My life has always been smooth, but lately it's been fantastic. It's going too well, almost scary. Is that so? Well, I'm glad to hear that. But it's strange, isn't it? What do you mean, strange? I heard from father that your company is in trouble. What? There's no way it's in trouble. Sure, the numbers might be down, but it's nothing I can't handle. It's impossible for our father's company to go under. That cannot happen. I'm more concerned about my wedding than the company. Oh, congratulations. I want to have the most luxurious celebrity wedding in the world. A wedding that'll make people all over the world jealous. Should I rent out a first class hotel? Or maybe a luxurious cruise ship? Or how about renting a private jet to transport the guests? Invite all relatives and friends and have a lively party. Hey, don't you think it's wonderful? It's impossible. What? What did you just say? I said it's impossible. Who are you talking to like that? What do you mean it's impossible? No guests will come. What? what are you talking about? How would you know something like that? Don't you understand, Camila? Of course I don't understand because that's impossible. Camila, everyone, relatives and friends, they all hate you. Even when you contact them, they don't get back to you, do they? Come to think of it, they don't reply. Why is that? What did I do? It's because of your disgraceful behavior at my wedding two years ago. That's the reason. But that's... I was trying to liven up the wedding! You were making a fool of yourself. Everyone knows it was harassment towards me. 
That's why no one will attend your wedding. In fact, even if you contact them, they will ignore you. That's a lie! For such a petty reason? But there's no reply to your messages, right? Yeah, there's no reply. I thought it was strange. This is what you deserve, Camila. Just because of that? You think that I would give up? That's right. If you miss the wedding, you'll be fined. Then everyone will have to attend. <sighs> this is ridiculous. That's exactly what they'll ignore, right? No, I'll use whatever means necessary. Even my father's prestige or anything else. I will make this wedding a success, no matter what. Ray! Ray! Where are you right now? What are you doing? I'm working at the office. What? Office? Don't you know today is the wedding day? Oh, today was the day, huh? Congratulations. Well then, excuse me. Wait, wait! I didn't ask for just a superficial greeting like that. Why? Why aren't you at the wedding? I invited you, didn't I? I was invited, but I didn't say I would go. Do you think such absurd logic would be acceptable? I rented out a luxury hotel. I paid a fortune. Do you really think you can refuse the invitation and get away with it? There will be a fine. Pay the fine. We didn't make that promise. I'll make sure you pay. If you refuse, I'll consult with a lawyer. Why? How could this be? I invited 200 people and no one showed up. Father or mother, relatives or friends. Not even people from work. What's going on? You must have planned this. I didn't plan anything, but I know why no one showed up. Shall I tell you, Camila? N no, I don't need to hear it from you. I'll figure it out myself. Fine then, I'll take my leave. Wait, wait, please explain it to me. I can't accept that father and mother didn't come. Well, then I'll tell you. Mother didn't come because father was really mad at her. Why? Mother is such a nice person. Mother was convenient for you, wasn't she, Camila? What? Don't speak ill of my mother! Mother doted on you. You know how they say silly kids are cute? Mother showed extreme affection towards you, her real daughter, who was ignorant and naive. It's only natural for a mother to love her own child, right? But the way she took care of you was beyond that. Parents normally scold their children when they do something or cause trouble for others. But somehow, Mother didn't do anything at all. It seemed like she had abandoned discipline and education. In a way, you could be seen as a victim. I don't understand what you're saying at all. Stop speaking ill of my mother! Do you remember what happened when you caused the assault incident? What does that matter? Mother did everything she could to cover it up. Yes, that's why Mother tried to bribe the police. It got leaked to the media. Do you know how much father and the company executives had to clean up your mess? I don't know! You probably didn't, did you? You and mother just locked yourselves in the room and cried. There was nothing else we could do! I was scared, you know? Scared? It was you who got drunk and caused the incident, injuring the driver, right? So what's your point? We managed to cover it up back then, and we'll surely manage to cover it up this time too. Are you expecting someone else to clean up your mess again? Even during the incident, the media swarmed the houses of company executives and relatives, causing them significant damage and trouble. But it was Father and I who went around apologizing to everyone, bowing our heads. Well, of course. You're family, right? Oh? I thought I'm not family. Father is my family. And bringing up past incidents like this, is it a boast to you? It's not a boast. That's why they won't attend your wedding. No way. Father's relatives and company executives won't attend because of the past incidents, right? Then what about my subordinates? You always looked down on them and treated them like fools. As a boss, you were the worst, Camila. You forced your subordinates to clean up after your mistakes as a matter of course. But that's their job! No, it's not. They were working overtime to cover for you in addition to their regular duties, you know? And yet... You didn't even reflect on your actions and kept going out drinking, right? Anyone would be angry. It's only natural for them to abandon you. That's not true. So, so what about my friends? They should come, right? Face reality, Camila. None of them will come. Why? Why not? Your friends from the past are all grown up now. They have families and are working seriously. Do you remember what you said to them? I don't remember saying anything horrible. You said, 
You live in a tiny house and have a poor life. What's wrong with that? It's a fact, and I didn't say anything wrong. Think about how they would feel if they were told that. They felt insulted and said they can't associate with you anymore. No one will come today. But even if that was true, it's strange that no one's coming. We invited a lot of relatives and friends from the groom side too. I told you, didn't I? No one is coming. But why? I hear the groom is similar to you. Similar? How so? Acting high and mighty and doing whatever he pleases. That's not true. That's why guests from the groom's side aren't coming either. Family, relatives, everyone. That's a lie. Besides, what do you know about the groom? I heard it from father. That's right! Father! Where is father? Father should definitely come. Our father is not coming either. He knows all about your actions up until now. That's not true! It's true. Even though he knew, because you're his own daughter, he was protecting you. But he said he has reached his limit. It's a lie. There's no way father would abandon me, right? Lies. It's all lies. To be abandoned by both mother and father, hated by relatives and friends. Did you not notice until it came to this? I've always wondered why I couldn't contact anyone. Finally, you figured it out, huh? Everyone has blocked you, Camila. I don't understand. Why would anyone block me? Oh, I see. I get it now. It's you, isn't it? Are you saying it's my fault? The only one who hasn't blocked me is you because you're the mastermind behind it all! Oh, that. I thought I would finally say what I wanted to say before cutting ties with you. I don't like being pushed around. Camila, I am happy, unlike you. The small company we started together as a couple is doing well, with more business partners coming in. It's thanks to the support of father and relatives. Why? How could this happen? I'm the one who's been through so much! Why is it just you that's happy? It's your own fault. Maybe you should learn a thing or two about social behavior and how to interact with people despite your pride and stubbornness due to your age. Anyway, this is the last straw. We're not family, so I'll be blocking your contact information. Don't you dare talk to me like that! Goodbye. It seems that nobody attended my sister's wedding, and it's become a hilarious anecdote. Despite my repeated warnings, my sister's attitude didn't improve at all, and she was eventually ousted from her position as the CEO and even kicked out of the company. It seems that the groom's parents' company didn't accept my sister and her husband either, and now they both work as day laborers. As for me, the company my husband and I started together is doing incredibly well, and we've even established a partnership with my father's company. We're launching a new business, too. I enjoy working every day so much. I'll give it my best today, too. Hey, are you angry at me? You don't call or text me at all, so... You already know that I had sex with your boyfriend, don't you? But it couldn't have been helped, because your boyfriend showed interest when I asked him out, and he never said no. It might be because I'm more attractive than you. It can't be helped, right? I stayed quiet and listened to you, and you said whatever you wanted to say. You had sex with my boyfriend and said that it couldn't have been helped? Because it's a fact. Are you making fun of me? Do you really think you can say such a thing? Don't you reflect on your actions at all? No, I don't. And why don't you try to be more creative so that you don't lose your boyfriend to me? Because you're like that. You get your boyfriend stolen over and over again by me. You... You do such stupid things, so... Have no friends, do you? Everyone says that if they become your friend, they get their boyfriend stolen. You're a bitch! <laughs> I don't feel anything from whatever losers say. A female friend is nothing more than a draw for me. In the first place, if they have a problem with that, they should do something so they don't get their boyfriend stolen. But they blame me for not being able to do so. You're such a... For me, 
Whether it belongs to someone or not, it doesn't matter. If I meet a man who's my type, I do whatever it takes to make him mine. What other woman can do this? I'm the only one, right? Now you know how attractive and good woman I am, don't you? Don't be silly. No, I'm serious. Besides, you and I have similar tastes in men, so I was attracted to your boyfriend this time too. I couldn't help myself. It seems that your bad habit haven't changed at all. The same thing happened when we were students. Oh, do you also remember? To tell you the truth, to steal your boyfriend, I wanted to go to the same university as you, but I couldn't have passed the test. Imagining going to the same university makes me sick. What? Do you really think so? Although I'm pretty like this. You're a real bitch, though. Don't be such a bad loser. Anyway, I ended up going to a different university, but I couldn't give up and entered a university located near your university. And at intercollegiate competitions, I got your boyfriend's contacts. This is what was happening. You never change. This time you did the same thing. You spied on me and stole my boyfriend. What's your intention? To steal my boyfriend you followed me to university and where I work this time. The obsession doesn't scare me, but makes me disgusted. What? Don't pretend to be tough. You also never change. You should have been disappointed by getting your boyfriend stolen, but pretended to be unaffected. This makes me irritated and makes me want to do more. You pretend to be a strong woman and it gets on my nerves. But because of such charmless behavior of you, your boyfriends leave you. Huh? Men like charming women, like me. That's why you got your boyfriend stolen this time too. You should show your charm like me, or miss the chance to get married. It's because you researched where I work, started working at the same place, and keep stealing my boyfriend. When will you stop doing such a stupid thing? I don't know. Well, it can't be helped. Because stealing someone's boyfriend is the only way for you to get a boyfriend. That's your only enjoyment of life, isn't it? That's too pitiful. Poor you. You're pretending to be strong and saying unnecessary things again. You're disgusting. No one likes a charmless old lady. By the way, you called me. So I ask you even though I don't want to. Where are you right now? What are you doing by getting a day off? Didn't our boss tell you? I called him and said I take a day off because I'm not feeling good today. And our boss said he'll pretend I was at work and I can take the day off. This is what he said. Not like someone. Our boss is kind. Now you're making eyes at the boss this time. You can't be helped. You're overthinking. I didn't do anything. Our boss did everything. Stop playing dumb. I don't care about you flattering our boss, but I don't want you to take a day off because of fake sickness. You have a lot of tasks that are due today, don't you? How are you going to deal with them? Besides, pretending to be at work while taking a day off will be a big problem. Even if you say that to me, I don't know anything about it. Our boss did everything, right? Oh, by the way, I can make you do all the tasks I have. That's what our boss said. So, for the poor co-worker who takes a day off due to sickness, do your best on the overtime work. Oh my, I can't believe you. So, bye. Hey you, listen to me. I was proposed to by a president of a very famous company. It's such a big company that even ignorant people like you know. He is very rich and very good looking. Oh, congratulations. Of course, we'll have a very gorgeous wedding. 
He said I can wear as many wedding dresses as I want because I look good in any dress. We'll decorate the venue with lots of flowers and serve the most expensive meals. We'll also prepare a custom-made wedding cake. We'll make our wedding a great one, which ordinary people like you can't have. Thank you for telling me a lot about something I didn't ask and have no interest in. But weren't you going to marry the man who you stole from me? Stop kidding me. That could never happen. The disgusting guy who is stingy and superficial, so there's no way he's going to get ahead in life. I don't want to deal with such a man. I didn't need him anymore, so I dumped him. He was crying, so... Why don't you go comfort him? You might be able to get back together. Oh, really? Then did you leave the other men too? Oh, did you know that I had a lot of backups? Yes, I did. Hmm. I don't care. I also don't need them anymore. Anyways, I'll quit the company. I'm going to marry a rich man, so I don't need to work anymore. Now I'm on the victorious side. It's a waste of time to go to work, so I quit right away. What are you talking about? That's impossible. That's too selfish. We don't have enough people. You have to hire a replacement and then take over everything, don't you? You can't just quit. Actually, I can do so because our boss let me. He said, I'll take care of everything, so it's fine and he accepted my request. He is your boss, isn't he? So you have to listen to him. And everything will be all right if you deal with the remaining tasks. You should be thankful to me. For you who keep being dumped by men, I gave a purpose in life which is to live for your career. You're really disgusting. <laughs> it's funny. It's pity that charmless woman who pretends to be strong is paid no attention by anyone. At most as a workaholic. So, please do your best. It doesn't matter to me. To your marriage, I don't have any interest. Before that, let's talk about our job for now. What? Why? As I said, I let you deal with all my tasks. I told you already, right? Anyways, I'm going to visit my fiancé's parents' house soon. I'll show you the pictures. Why? You don't need to. It seems his parents live in a very big house. That's great, isn't it? It'll be mine in the future. As I said, I have no interest in your marriage. We have to talk about our job first. You have to finish the tasks that you already started working on. Well, it's time for me to go to the hair salon, so bye! Wait! Thank you for your hard work. Look at this. This is my fiancé's house, and it's quite big, isn't it? I'm going to get married to such a rich man. What? Wait. Why are you at my parents' house? What? Don't say such a stupid thing. Being a bad loser and telling a lie is ugly. No, this is my house, and this is evidence, a picture that I took in front of my parents' house when I was a kid. See, the entrance is completely the same as the one in your picture, isn't it? Why? <laughs> Such a well-prepared joke. I'm not going to be tricked. It's not a joke. My family is an owner of the company which has many apparel brands across the country. Your fiancé had said the same thing, hadn't he? My fiancé is the son of a noble family, and he's the next president. Yes, so that's my brother. No way! You're lying. It's not a lie. I just showed you the picture, right? Oh my god. I didn't know you were born in such a noble family. Wait, does it mean I'll be your sister-in-law? I don't want you to be, so I'll do whatever it takes to prevent it. Don't you dare do anything you don't have to. You're such a disgusting woman. I've taken so long to find happiness. Don't ruin it. That's my line. Don't say you forgot about the things you've done to me. 
Since I was a student, I got my boyfriend stolen. From who? You forgot what you've done, and you're making a fuss. I'm quite mad at you. Do you know? People call this retribution. You're such a bitch. Don't bother me. I'll marry into a wealthy family, and all the assets of this house will be mine. If you say anything weird to your brother, you'll pay the price. I'll kick you out. That's scary. You finally showed your true personality. Anything weird, meaning what you've done for a long time? You spied on my boyfriends for a long time, stole him from me, and flattering with our boss. Which is a disgusting woman? Me or you? Shut up! And it seems you're misunderstanding. So I'll tell you. What? The next president is me, not my brother. What? What did you just say? Oh, don't you understand? I said the next president is me. My brother will be the vice president. No way! It's true. I'm smarter than him. So to get some experience, my father asked me to work at a subsidiary company by hiding who I really am. Of course, at the university, I studied management. But I can't get on-site experience without working there, right? That's why I'm working here like this. And I got a lot of experience. In three years, I'll be called back as the next president. Not my brother, but me. No way. That's a lie. Anyway, I'll contact my brother right now. What? By doing so, I can prove that I'm his sister. I have to ask him not to marry you. No, stop! I'm not going to stop. The marriage of the vice president and you is just a huge burden for our company. Because you are a woman who has an affair with your boss. What? I won't be tricked this time. While you were taking a day off, everyone was talking about you and our boss having an affair. No way! I don't know anything! Don't play dumb. Everyone knows everything. The boss's wife is mad and preparing to charge you much alimony. You should be prepared. I don't have such money! It doesn't matter. I'll tell you in advance. Don't rely on our family money. A bitch like you will never be allowed to marry my brother. You can't marry into a wealthy family. No way! Hey! You! I'll do whatever it takes. Please forgive me! Of course, everything you've done to me will be reported to my brother and parents. So please put your mind at ease. You're such a mean person! Hey! You! Wait! No, I didn't mean to hurt you! It was an impulse of the moment! You've brought it on yourself. For what you've done, you should accept the responsibility. No! You're unkind! Oh, if I can't marry into a wealthy family, I won't quit the company. I'll do my best, so please assist me in getting back to the company. Are you kidding me? I already hired a serious person to replace you. And even if you get back, you'll be looked at coldly by everyone. Can you bear with it? Ugh, that's... But, but, I can't pay alimony without working! Please, help me! Missed call. Hey, you! Missed call. Missed call. My brother found out Ella's true personality, that she's a slut who stole my boyfriend and had an affair with her boss, and they canceled their marriage. Our boss is caught having an affair, and he was reassigned. Ellis, who was charged a large amount of alimony, negotiated by herself to get back to the company. But the company rejected, because they can't hire someone who can't do their job, but just keeps causing problems. Of course, after giving up, she started job hunting, but it didn't go smoothly, and she paid alimony by borrowing money. She is now paying back the debt by working part-time. On her social media, opposite from the happy-go-lucky, ball-busting content she'd been posting, she posts complaints every day. 
such as she can't live with it, she can't live her life, and she is waiting for someone to help her out of such a poor situation. Hi, I'm Sophie, and you... well, you must be the wife. Huh? Sorry, but who are you looking for? Have we met before? I don't think I know your name. It's the first time I've met you. You're Tad's wife, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes I am, but who are you? Well, this might come as a shock to you, but here is my request. I want you to break up with Tad. I'm dating Tad. You are what? You're dating him? What do you mean you are dating him? He is my husband. Are you saying you are having an affair with my husband? That's exactly what I'm saying. It's been quite a few months already. He has promised to marry me. A promise of marriage? Do you know what you are saying? He is a married man. I am his wife. Yes, I know, I know. But Tad and I are also in a serious relationship. Honestly, Tad does not know I'm contacting you right now. The other day while Tad was taking a shower at the hotel, he received a line message from you on his phone. So I sent your contact information to my phone. Wait, at the hotel? What? I can't believe what you're saying to me. It makes me sick. Tad, you were lying. You sound so surprised. And yet, Tad complains about his marriage life to me almost every day. What you might not realize is that when you talk about work, it sounds like you're constantly bragging. Don't you realize how stressful that is to him? He has always felt he was being looked down upon. Well, I didn't mean to. You are a graduate of a famous elite university and you work for a big company that everyone knows, right? And I hear you're in a position of some power. So if he has to hear such sarcastic bragging from you every day, he's not gonna like that, sweet Tad. Any good wife would change her job, maybe something more suitable like a part-time job, a stay-at-home mom. At least then you'll be able to pay more attention to your husband and his image. I have never wanted to be nasty or condescending. I'm working with the career I've built up so far. Yes, I work hard, but it is to make our family life easier. Tad isn't looking for an easy life. What he wants is to be free from you. I'll say it again, get divorced. No, I don't want a divorce. Let me assure you, Tad is very happy when he's on a date with me. But as soon as he gets home, he's so gloomy, it's as if he needs to report a mistake to his boss. You know what? It's painful for him to see you. When he is with me, he can relax, have fun, a life of dates and presents. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you went on a date with Tad? The last time I went on a date with Tad was... You can't even remember, can you? Tad takes me to his favorite shops and fancy restaurants almost every day, and he showers me with gifts. Are you saying Tad is with you every day? He comes home late every night saying he's so busy at work. We rarely go out together. I assumed it was because he is so tired, even during the holidays. Before we got married and as newlyweds, we used to date, travel, and get gifts. You still don't understand? Coming home late because he is supposedly at work is just a disguise for his cheating time. Well, I realize that now. It's just, I just believe Tad. You didn't believe it. You were naive. You probably speak so little at home, the bare minimum. So wrapped up in yourself, you didn't even notice his suspicious behavior. He is having an affair right under your nose and you didn't even realize it. That's... No, I see that now. <laughs> I guess so. All his hard-earned cash he spends on me. No matter how you think about it, Tad doesn't have feelings for you anymore. He's preoccupied with me. He has no love for you. He cheats on you every day. Surely that's reason enough for a divorce, right? Just think about it. Well, I must go see Tad. I'll talk to him. 
Yes, well, I will be right here waiting. Tad, we need to talk. What's up, Claire? I'll just come out and say it. You're cheating, aren't you? Uh... No, no, what are you talking about? Saying such a stupid thing. Someone named Sophie contacted me. She's asking me to divorce you. Uh, Sophie? Why does she have your contact information? When you went to the hotel with her, she was able to see your phone screen. Oh, I see. Well, I guess there's no point in denying it. I'm sorry, I lied. But the truth is, I love Sophie. So, Claire, I want you to break up. So it's true. We are married and you have feelings for another woman? I don't understand how that woman, too, could be so unfeeling and mess with someone's husband. I don't understand it at all. Don't say anything bad about her. You must have realized there was something wrong with you. Are you really going to protect that woman? Claire, I wanted to have children, but it's been eight years since we've been married and still nothing. My mother always told me, if you can't have children, give up sooner than later or you're just wasting your time. I begged my mother not to say anything to you about children. I didn't want you to know. I thought I was getting along with your parents. You have always been so stressed out from all the running around for work that you couldn't have kids. You're wrong. Yes, it's hard work, but it's also a lot of fun. And if you get pregnant, do you think it will be easy for you as a manager to stay at home or at least take a break? Sophie is still young and wants to be a stay-at-home mom. We will have a good environment for raising our children. As a man, it's always better for my image to be with a beautiful and young woman. It is one thing for you to go so far as to say it's me, my body, my lifestyle that makes it difficult for me to conceive and give you children. But that's not all there is to this, is it, Tad? You feel I'm looking down on you, isn't that the truth? Yes, yes it is the truth. When I come home tired from work, you tell me stories and experiences at work that I have no idea of. It has been hard for me. It was as if you were saying, you don't know about all these things, you incompetent man. I don't think so at all. I love my job and I just keep working because I could travel, save up for my kids, and make life a little easier. So what? Trust me, there's nothing attractive about a woman who looks down on a man. It's different with Sophie. She relies on me in that respect. The man stands in the front. The wife takes a step back and she follows. It's exactly the way it should be. I see. Oh, you don't know what it feels like. My parents keep asking me, when will we have our first child, their first grandchild? But I've kept it to myself for eight years. My mom was right. It's a waste of time. That's so terrible. You can't say that. Then it would have been so much better if you had just divorced me quickly, written it off to a personality disagreement or anything else. But why cheat on me? If I just divorced you with no explanation, what would you have been? If I never gave you the opportunity to have a family, what would I look like? You would just be a lonely old businesswoman. Besides, I was in love with you once. At least in this way I did it with mercy. I gave you a chance. Oh, don't say that. I won't believe you for a minute saying you only thought of me. But I'm glad I heard your true feelings today. Now we can get divorced without any regrets. Oh, yes. I'm glad you understood. So let's move on to divorce. Claire, you agreed to get a divorce? Wow, news travels fast. Yes, Tad informed me that he had just agreed to divorce you. So when will the divorce be finalized? If you need any proof of cheating, I'll give it to you and I'll pay you alimony. What is this? You are weirdly supportive. It's creepy. Well, I am the one who asked you to divorce him and I want it finalized as quickly as possible. I want to marry him. Tad is needed in the company. He is about to get a promotion and he is making a good amount of money, so he'll pay it off soon. Oh, you look surprised. 
You had such a cold relationship with Tad. I see you didn't know that. Yes, well, thank you for informing me on these things. I will inform the president of the other side. You mean the president of Tad's company? What do you mean? The company I worked for is an important client of Tad's company, and we are currently working on the teams with each other to sign a big contract, and I'm the one to make the final decision. I'm going to have to call off this deal and all the ones we've had. Naturally, Tad would be fired as a matter of responsibility. I didn't know about that! You should do the right thing and get out of the company. You're so selfish. Why? I'm not doing anything wrong. This is just something I have to do. Well, you threaten all you want. We have a reserve, some savings. I guess Tad expected something like this to happen. When he leaves his current company, he is going to start a new business. Soon it will be bigger than your company. Oh, I am sure. More than our company. I hope it works. Hi, ex-wife. I filed the marriage registration with him today. We officially became a couple. Well, congratulations. Thanks! We're well prepared to start our own business. Sure, we are living with Tad's parents at the moment. But hey, I'm sure all my dreams will come true. Soon we will live in the Tower Mansion, on the top floor. If that's where we'll end up, I could put up with living with my in-laws for a while. And we're going to have our wedding in Dubai. If you insist, we can invite you to Tad's friend's table, okay? Oh, can you afford that? Isn't it impossible to have a ceremony with only relatives nearby? Are you sure about your facts? What are you talking about? Are you jealous? You are so envious of us. No, I am not. The fact is, Tad is in debt. It's not an easy amount to pay back. Tad in debt? What are you talking about? He is rich enough to have a tower mansion. That tower mansion was originally mine. Oh, yours? What are you talking about? The restaurant Tad's parents were running for 10 years went bankrupt. I rented out a room in my tower mansion because they didn't have a place to live. When we were talking about property distribution, we were going to divide the tower mansion to Tad, the house to me, but just before we changed the name of the tower mansion, it was discovered that Tad had wasted a ridiculous amount of money. Extravagance! No way! Yes, just as you imagined and he used to embezzle company money to pay for dates and gifts for you. So you are also involved in embezzlement. Why? I just got what he gave me. And Tad didn't put any salary into the family budget. He used all the family savings and his parents' money for himself. Of course, that is added to the alimony, and I've already informed his company that the perpetrator of the embezzlement is Tad. I heard he had taken out a significant amount of money to fund his new startup before he was fired. The company will sue him on both criminal and civil charges. Hey, if you do that, we'll end up with a ridiculous amount of debt. Well, it depends on the upcoming trial, but it's going to be a huge amount of money. Oh, by the way, on top of this, plus the alimony for the affair against you, it's going to be a lifelong debt for the two of you. That's why your dream of living in the Tower Mansion is unfortunately not going to come true. Sophie, you did such a devious thing to a woman's husband, but what a shame that you couldn't be a rich man's wife. Such an extraordinary amount of money, and I'm not even working. I thought I could live on his earnings, and I used up my savings. So, why don't you work for a little bit? You know, I have many connections I could introduce you to. No thanks! I want to be a stay-at-home mom! I see. Well, I'm a stranger now, so it's none of my business. Oh, will you tell Tad's parents? Tawaman's rent is fine, but I lent him 51,000 US dollars during the bankruptcy process. Could you tell them to refund me on that as soon as possible? Hey, you've got to be kidding me! Don't add to my debt anymore, please. It seems there are only two options left for you. You either get angry or cry. Oh yes, one last thing. There's more? Come on! In reality, you're the wrong person to get angry with. 
This is all the result of what Tad and his parents did. So, have you heard that we never had kids? Yeah, I've heard about it. For the divorce mediation, I went to the hospital to find out the cause. It turns out I am healthy, but Tad was the one who was the cause of us not having children. Oh no, it can't be true. We're so deep in debt and we can't even have children. I'm totally out of luck. Well, I guess you can't be expected to have kids if you're so deep in debt and with Tad's little problem. Well, that's it, Claire. I'm divorcing Tad. You're a smart girl. You must have a good idea for divorce, right? Yeah, why don't you have an affair with Tad? That way you can leave Tad and add a little to the negative amount of your property division. What are you talking about? Why should I do that for you? I will make sure you get your payment for taking my husband away from me. Oh no. Tad was sued with both criminal and civil charges by the company and owed a tremendous amount of money. To be honest, I knew he wasn't putting any money into the house and that he was spending the family savings, but I didn't know about the money his parents were sending him and the embezzlement until right before the divorce. I thought it was just a small addition to the alimony due to the division of property, but the fact that they brought all this destruction on themselves due to the lawsuit was more than I expected. I'd like to think that he is indeed sorry. Ted was a bit of a slow reader and didn't have much knowledge of how to set up a business in the first place. He was so bad at getting to the point that he even had trouble finding a new job, let alone starting up a business. He is now living in a small apartment with his parents, desperately trying to pay off his debts. Sophie tried to leave Tad, but her in-laws would never forgive her because she was the source of the problem. Even so, they said she fled from the house, almost running away in the night. Sophie's family has been told the whole story and she is unable to return to her parents' house. They don't know who to turn to or where she is. By the way, for my part, I was able to successfully sign a contract with Tad's company because they were able to fire him and hang the culprits before I could refuse. At my current company, I was promoted thanks to my past performance and this case. It's going to get busier and busier, but I am looking forward to it because I love my job. Hello, Judy. How are you? Eric? It's been a while. I thought we had long since lost touch. What brings you here now? It's been a while. I think the last time we contacted each other was after graduating from college. I have some news for you today. Actually, I'm getting married soon. I really want you to come to the wedding. I've sent you an invitation. Has it arrived yet? You're getting married? Congratulations, but there's no way I'm going to your wedding. I'll send back the RSVP with a decline. Don't say that. Please mark your attendance. I'll be waiting for your response. I'll send back the RSVP, but I won't be attending. If possible, please don't contact me again. Goodbye. Incoming call. Judy, did you RSVP to the invitation? You said you couldn't attend yesterday, but that was a joke, right? Of course you'll be attending, right? I can't believe you would say that. I'm disappointed. I RSVP'd with a decline. Why would you do that? I specifically invited you to come. Do you have something else going on? What you did to me, have you forgotten already? What I did to Judy? Do you not remember why we broke up? You cheated on me with my friend, didn't you? While we were together, you were tempted by my friend and you dumped me, right? Oh, that's what this is about. You can't possibly have forgotten. And yet, you have the audacity to send me a wedding invitation. You really have no tact. It's no big deal, just inviting you to my wedding. And the bride isn't even Anne. Even though you knew that you and I were dating and cheated on you, I thought you two were good friends. Well, you two were close, right? I do feel a little guilty about dating Anne, but is it really worth getting so angry about? I haven't forgiven the two of you yet, and I have no intention of forgiving you in the future. There's no way I'm attending your wedding. I can't offer my congratulations, absolutely not. What are you even thinking? Okay, okay, that's all in the past, isn't it? <laughs> How long are you going to hold on to this? Just forget about it. I can't forget about it, you know. I lost both a boyfriend and a friend I trusted. I was deeply hurt by being betrayed by both of them. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> I apologize, so please forgive me. <laughs> you don't even seem sorry enough to forget about it. You don't even have the intention to apologize, right? Even if you apologize, it's the same. I won't forgive you. Okay, okay, calm down. But anyways, listen to me instead. I went ahead to the wedding venue with Anne. It's really luxurious. So I talked to Anne about having a grand wedding that would match the venue. Both Anne and I have a lot of friends, so we want everyone to celebrate with us. I want a lot of people to come, you know? All of our friends from college, I sent them invitations. So if Judy comes, it will surely be fun. It might be a little tough to see us happy together, though. <laughs> I've said it many times, but I won't be attending the wedding. I can't forgive you for cheating, knowing that you were my boyfriend, and I can't forgive Anne for dating you and stealing you from me after knowing that. I have no intention of getting involved with you two in the future. Don't contact me again, okay? It's already in the past. Just come to the wedding, okay? I've said it many times, but I want to have a grand wedding. For that, I want to invite a lot of people. After all, I met Anne in college, so I sent invitations to all our college friends. It's only natural, right? I haven't received a response yet, but I'll be able to see everyone. Aren't you looking forward to it? I don't know about your circumstances. We can meet without the two of you around. So it's not necessary to see each other at the wedding. Inviting your ex-girlfriend like me is something I can't imagine happening normally. Anne is insisting that Judy must come no matter what. Anne? Is she planning something strange? Well, I don't know. I don't want to see Anne either. There seems to be something fishy going on, so I don't want to go even less. I'm hanging up now. Goodbye. Hey, hey, the conversation isn't over yet. Goodbye. Hi, Judy. Long time no see. Are you doing well? Well, I guess not. <laughs> I got your RSVP for the wedding invitation, but you won't be attending? <laughs> I asked Eric to persuade you. But now it's you following in his footsteps. I'm fed up with this. What? I told Eric too, I have no intention of getting involved with you two. Hey, first of all, congratulations on our wedding, right? Celebrate our happiness. Your friend is getting married. I don't consider you as my friend anymore. I think you two are the worst. I can't even congratulate you. <laughs> Stop saying such horrible things. <laughs> Well then, you don't have to think of us as friends either. Please come to the wedding, otherwise my plan will be ruined. <laughs> plan? What are you talking about? It's a brilliant plan. To see you witnessing Eric and Mai's happiness and feeling frustrated. But if you don't come to the wedding, that plan won't work out, right? I want to show you myself in a wedding dress. So are you attending then? I'll reserve a seat for you. Huh? Are you sane? I can't imagine a rational person thinking like that. Do you even understand what you're saying? I feel sick. I feel nauseous. I don't even feel angry. What is this plan of yours? Did you see the invitation? Don't you think the venue is gorgeous? At that luxurious wedding venue, surrounded by numerous guest blessings, I will spend a happy day. I will flaunt that sight in front of you, and you will feel ashamed of your actions, fall to your knees and reflect. <laughs> Imagine it, how miserable you will be. <laughs> Isn't it a great plan? Reflect? On what? What should I reflect on? I wonder what actions I should feel ashamed of. I think you and Eric should be the ones reflecting, though. Huh? Don't you have any idea? Oh, did you forget that I married Eric and it shocked you? Oops, my bad. <laughs> but you know, Eric chose me over you because I'm cuter than you. And he said being with you is boring. Poor Judy. Well, I really don't understand what you're saying. Can you explain it to me in a way I can understand? You don't get it? Wow, I didn't think you were that dumb. <laughs> All right, I'll explain it to you. You see, back in college, we were friends, right? Until you cheated with Eric, that is. I thought we were good friends. Well, we were friends, but I actually didn't like you all that much. Is that so? Then why did we hang out together? You were just a supporting role for me. That's why I hung out with you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have become friends with someone like you. A supporting role? Did you really think such cruel things? I was just pretending to be close to you, and you ugly thing. I thought men would dote on me. For that reason. But it turned out to be different. They were all seemingly clueless guys who went after you. There's no reason for them to choose you over me, considering I'm cuter. Well, you always acted cute in front of guys, didn't you? Did you want to be liked by men so badly? Do you remember that you have a boyfriend named Eric? Are you not fabricating memories? I don't recall ever acting cute in front of guys. Really now, weren't you desperate to be liked by men? 
Yet, when approached by men, you would say things like, that person's personality is a bit off, or they're not my type. Weren't you picky with men? It was so unpleasant. What an arrogant woman you are, Judy. I don't do such vulgar things like being picky with men. And besides, all the men went towards me because you treated the boy so poorly. Everyone was saying that Anne is cute but has a harsh personality. I even tried to defend you, saying that's not true, Anna's a kind girl. But looking back now, I didn't need to do that. What are you talking about? I'm not the one at fault here. It's all the men's fault for being fooled by someone like you who pretends to be innocent, when in reality you're a self-centered woman who likes men. So, I thought I would make you reflect on your actions. If someone doesn't do it, you'll never understand, right? That's why I planned it all out. A woman who manipulates men around her deserves to be punished, don't you think? So, I invited your precious boyfriend to my wedding with him and showed him my happy appearance. I thought it would make you reflect a little. Do you understand? It's all for your sake to make you realize. I'm such a kind person, aren't I? Such delusional thinking and talking about punishment? Who do you think you are? It's a nuisance to be dragged around by your delusions. It's not a delusion, it's the truth. You are a self-centered woman pretending to be innocent. Are you still going to say such things? You don't seem to have any intention of reflecting at all. I'm glad I planned it after all. Come to the wedding, won't you? When you see me as a bride, I'm sure you'll feel quite bitter. Did you really think that you're superior to me? Too bad. <laughs> I'm marrying Eric, whom you like. After the wedding, I'll build a happy family. Something you can't do. <laughs> you should reflect on your past actions if you're capable. I don't have anything to reflect on. I won't attend the wedding, and I'm not even remotely regretful that you're marrying Eric. Do whatever you want with the wedding or anything else. I know how frustrating this must be for you. <laughs> well, to be honest, I never have any intention of I never had any intention of marrying Eric or having a shotgun wedding. I feel a little sorry for Judy though. Eric says I'm better than you and that he'll make me happy. Jealous, aren't you? After all, you won't be able to marry anyone. <laughs> I don't want to hear it anymore. You betray people and yet you act so insensitive. I don't want to marry Eric or anyone like him. Well, I wish you happiness. Enjoy your time together, the two of you. <laughs> no energy to argue back? Feeling down? Poor thing. <laughs> yes, I'm tired of it already. I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> Poor thing. Just make sure you attend the wedding, okay? I want you to reflect. Listen, Anne, I'll say it again and again. I have no intention of attending the wedding. Can't you at least admit that? I see. Even after saying all this, you still won't attend. But at least now you understand what kind of actions you've taken in the past. It's a pity you won't be able to attend the wedding, but in terms of prompting reflection, it's a success. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Yes, that's true. If you can't come, at least prepare a congratulatory message, even just one. You can explain all the foolish things you've done in the past and how wonderful of a couple we are. <laughs> come up with an impressive message befitting a grand wedding. Think about it. Incoming call. Incoming call. Hey! Incoming call. Pick up the phone! Don't keep calling me multiple times. You're being persistent. I don't want to be involved with you anymore. How many times do I have to say it to get through to you? I don't care about such things. What are you even doing for me? I'm busy, so stop it. Answer my question! Why did you send me that? It's ruining the wedding! Oh, come to think of it, today was the wedding, right? Congratulations. Did everyone get to see our happy face? As if I would ever think that! What was that movie about? I'm glad it arrived safely. How was my message in the movie? Huh? Did it move you? I won't be moved by it at all! You embarrassed me! Sending something like that, what were you thinking? It's because you pressured me to prepare a congratulatory message, to let all the guests know what kind of foolish things you've done in the past and what an amazing couple you are. I worked together with everyone to create it. Don't joke around. You ruined the wedding. And besides, what do you mean by work together with everyone? Explain! You invited some of our college friends, right? Did anyone attend? None of our friends attended. Did you do something? I'm sure you did something. Did you threaten everyone not to come? Don't blame me for it. I wouldn't do such a stupid thing. It's not me we're talking about here. After you sent invitations to everyone, I received messages from everyone saying, it looks like Eric and Anne are getting married. They seem to want to have a grand wedding and have sent invitations to all their college acquaintances. I wonder if Judy didn't receive one either? You see, everyone knows about you trying to steal Eric from me when we were dating in college, how Eric fell for it and cheated on me, and how he dumped me. So when they found out I was also invited, they were astonished at your insensitivity. 
When I told them that you asked me to send a congratulatory message, they were at a loss for words. They couldn't believe how audacious you were. That's when everyone said they would help put together not a congratulatory message, but rather a video exposing your actions. What? You have some interesting friends. By the way, I… I never said not to attend the wedding. I think everyone chose to decline the invitation based on their own will. It's only natural considering they know about your actions during our college days. Why would you say something so cruel? Everyone is being so harsh! It's ironic how you can say such things while disregarding your own actions. Well, in the message video, everyone revealed a lot of things, didn't they? Wasn't it initially about how you plotted to steal Eric from me even though I was dating him, and how arrogant you were deceiving other guys around us? You thought you would make me reflect on my actions and took Eric away, right? Your imagination knows no bounds. Everyone testified to that, didn't they? They said I was pretending to be innocent, but in reality, you twisted the facts and approached Eric on your own. It's not a delusion! You acted all cute in front of guys in reality! Eric must have been a fool to be deceived by you and cheated on me. It's really ridiculous. And on top of that, you tried to invite me to your wedding after doing such cruel things. That's so insensitive, as they pointed out. Did you understand that? Well, in order to have a lavish wedding, you need to invite a lot of guests. And besides, what happened in college is in the past. Forget about it already! I wanted you to reflect on your actions. That's why you needed to come to the wedding. That's what they're calling insensitive. Why can't you understand that? Oh, by the way, I didn't realize it at the time, but it seems like Eric was quite a player. Even after officially dating you after we broke up, many girls testified that they were approached by him. Even when they rejected him, he kept trying to pursue them and it was bothersome. So they said. I didn't know he had such a habit of cheating. It seems like he was careful not to get involved with acquaintances from college. If we had stayed together and gotten married, I shudder to think about it. It's a good thing we broke up. And I have you to thank for that at least. Thank you. I didn't know either that Eric was fooling around with other women like that? It's a terrible betrayal! It seems he was playing around until just before the wedding. With so many testimonies coming out, he must have been quite promiscuous, right? I didn't know! I was also deceived! Well, Eric's story was also awful, but so were you. You caused trouble for many people, just like me, by being an arrogant woman and making baseless accusations. These were testimonies that said... There were testimonies that said they received one-sided harassment from you. It wasn't just baseless accusations, there were legitimate reasons for it! Maybe the problem was on your end? By the way, there were quite a lot of people who were affected by you guys, huh? Thanks to that, I never ran out of material for my movie. <laughs> Thank you! Editing was tough, but I'm happy to see that people got to see it. I'm sure everyone who helped is also happy. You're so noisy! I didn't want to see that kind of thing! I heard that there would be a surprise movie, and I was so excited! I was planning to introduce you guys in a positive way, but it turned out like that. It's not my responsibility, right? <laughs> I heard from friends who attended the wedding that you guys were making a fuss like stop, stop during the movie. It was a message movie that we all made with effort. Your parents and other guests must have been surprised, knowing that the bride and groom are such terrible people. Please stop it already! Thanks to that movie, the wedding was ruined, and then Eric's parents told me we didn't think our son would marry such a girl. Eric may be at fault too, but please pretend this marriage never happened. The whole wedding is on the verge of being cancelled! My parents also said don't marry such a man. Eric is also hurt. He hasn't said a word to me since the wedding ended. Can you understand our feelings? I don't want to understand. I don't want to think about it. What kind of cruel woman are you? Take responsibility! Yes, you're right. Since the wedding was ruined, you need to compensate us. Pay for the wedding expenses, and we'll also charge you for damages. I'll make sure to bill everyone involved in that movie. I refuse. Why do we have to pay? Because your movie completely ruined our wedding! Marriage is about to disappear. Of course, right? That you take responsibility and pay for all the expenses we incurred. I already told you, I refuse. Why don't you instead worry- Why don't you worry about yourself instead? What if you were sued for your actions so far? It must be tough, right? How many people have you harassed in the past? Just by saying you're making a movie, you've gathered quite a number of victims, you know? What will you do if everyone sues you? Well, that's... In fact, you might end up being sued instead. And, besides harassment, you boasted about shoplifting, haven't you? You probably have many other shady things you're hiding, aren't you? Are you really okay? Um, well... And if Eric's parents are against the marriage, they might sue you too. That's... But Eric promised to make me happy. Now that they've seen your true nature, they might want to retract their support. Do you understand? 
You've caused a lot of trouble for those around you all this time, even if you didn't realize it. No matter how much you want something, you shouldn't take what belongs to others. You shouldn't harass others based on your assumptions. You don't even understand such basic things, do you? It should be a valuable lesson for you. You should change your behavior from now on. Like that? If you understand, then never bother me again. If you do that, I won't demand compensation from you, I won't report your past crimes, and I'll even delete the movie. How about that? Understood. Don't contact me anymore. I'm cutting you off. Hey, Judy? Hey, listen, don't ignore me. Eric's gone. Hey, do you know where he is? Answer me. Ugh, you really can't understand my words, can you? Didn't we promise not to get involved with each other anymore? And didn't we promise to keep the past in silence? Can't you even understand something as simple as that? Can I sue you? That's not the point. The day after the wedding, Eric disappeared. Do you know where he is? Do you have any idea? I wouldn't know where he is. Why are you asking me? I'm asking not only you, but everyone else, too. But nobody gives me any answers. Are they all hiding, Eric? Where could he have gone? He doesn't answer his phone, and my messages remain unread. I wonder if he ran away because you asked for compensation as a condition for marriage. <laughs> How do you know about that? I heard from a friend who attended your wedding. After watching that video, I found out that Eric had been involved with someone other than me. You were apparently quite angry about the fact that he was fooling around until right before the wedding. Well, it's only natural to be angry. I was betrayed, so it's only expected, right? And you too were accused of various wrongdoings in that video. But you seem to have turned a blind eye and confronted him. Did Eric say anything? I remember him saying that he didn't think you were that kind of woman. But what I did was just a little thing, right? I don't think it's something to worry about. Instead of that, Eric should want to marry me more than you, so I'm willing to forgive his infidelity if he pays compensation for his betrayal. It's not strange at all, is it? I'll say I'm marrying him, so he should be happy, right? Why is he running away? This is strange. <sighs> My head hurts. Maybe Eric is already with one of the other girls he's close to. Just like me, being abandoned by you. That's impossible. There's no way I could be abandoned. Anyway, don't get involved with me anymore. No, tell me Eric's whereabouts. If you really don't know where he is, you could search for him together. We were friends, right? I'm saying I don't know. You're really persistent. How many times do I have to tell you not to get involved with me? If you contact me again, I'll have, some, I'll have my husband take legal action. What? Husband? Whose? You're married? What do you mean? Weren't you supposed to marry Eric? When did that happen? I never wanted to marry Eric. I'll, I'm already married to someone else and we have children. What? I didn't know. You got married before me and even have children. What an arrogant woman you are, thinking you can get married before me. Is there a rule that says I can't get married before you? I'll do as I please when it comes to marriage. But considering you as a potential husband, he's not that great, huh? Don't make fun of my husband. He may be older, but... I bet there's no way you could marry a good man. You settled for an older man because you couldn't attract someone from your own age group, right? <laughs> That's the only way you could get married, huh? Oh, wait. But you mentioned asking your husband for legal action. What do you mean? Don't tell me. My husband is a lawyer, a very competent one. What? A lawyer? If he wants to, he can easily pursue legal action against you and your friends. Hold on a moment. I didn't ask for your opinion. A lawyer, you say? Well... I could sue you for your past misdeeds as well. Stop that! You said you wouldn't sue me! It's because you're so persistent, despite me telling you to stay away and stop harassing me with repeated contact that it's become a nuisance. Why did you get married to a lawyer? An ugly person like you? It's none of your business, right? By the way, I received a call from your parents earlier. They said their daughter was hurt and embarrassed because of me and blamed me for sending the video, even though you were the one who asked me to send congratulatory messages. <laughs> I told them that it was a collaborative effort with everyone, but they fell silent. <laughs> After that, they kept asking me for Eric's whereabouts, just like you, so I told them if they continue to cause trouble, we can have a legal discussion. They hung up right away. Your parents are just as unreasonable as you. <sighs> Why do I have to go through all this? I just wanted you, Eric and Judy, to reflect on your actions a little. It's all just your self-centered delusion, though. I don't even know if I can get married, and yet Judy is already married to a lawyer and has children. Why is that? Poor me. Is it over now? I have nothing more to say to you. Wait! Yes, I just came up with a good idea. Judy, if your husband is a lawyer, then help me get compensation from Eric. I want to get married too. Give me a hand. If your husband is a lawyer, he can handle it, right? Find Eric and claim compensation. 
Of course, you and I are friends, so you won't charge me any fees, right? Or if Eric is found, I'll make him pay for it. What are you talking about? I'm truly disgusted. Do you really think I'll help you? Do you not remember what you did to me with that video? You're not even reflecting on anything at this point. I don't understand. I have no intention of helping you. I'm sure if you ask anyone else, they'll say the same thing as me. That's right, help me! I hate it. Why don't you try asking someone else for help? Just try asking for help from someone else as an experiment. Oh, but even if Eric is gone, no one will respond, right? Well, it might be impossible then. Please, I beg you, help me find Eric. We used to be friends, right? Did you forget about that? It's true that we had good times together, but I was just a pawn for you to use, remember? You were just pretending to be friends with me. We were never friends to begin with. I'll delete your contact information too. Don't ever contact me again. If you try to contact me again, I'll really have my husband press charges against you. Hey, please help me, I'm begging you. Your husband is a lawyer, right? Please cooperate. Hey, I'm begging you, don't ignore me. Anne desperately searched for Eric, but he was never found. She was ignored by Judy and pleaded with other friends for help, but as Judy had said, no one lent a hand. And so, Anne and Eric's marriage effectively fell apart. Anne played the role of the tragic heroine abandoned by her husband, but those around her who knew the truth were incredibly cold. No one sympathized with Anne. A few years later, she met a new man and thought it was a fateful encounter, but he turned out to be a fraud. Without realizing it, Anne was swindled out of all her remaining assets. Now, it seems she quietly lives with her parents. I wonder if he'll respond today? Oh, is this Kate? You finally responded. George, it's been a while. How have you been? Hey Kate, it's been a while. Are you doing well too? Doing well? No way! I've been trying to contact you for a whole year since you left. Why did you keep ignoring me even though I contacted you so many times? Shut up! It was because you kept complaining. I had reasons to complain. You said, I'm going to work seriously and find a good job, so help me out. That's why I lived with you and paid all the living expenses. Everything you say is a lie. I don't trust you anymore. It's not a lie. I was looking for a job for a long time. No job suited me. There's no job that someone like you can do. And on top of it off, you suddenly disappeared and were completely unresponsive for a long time. I have reasons to complain. At that time you said, never come back again, so I did what you said. You have no reason to complain. At that time, I remember we were fighting and things escalated. Do you remember now? I just showed respect to you for having financially supported me and I did just what you told me to do. You were the one who said, get out and never come back. I just did what you told me to do, so it was not my fault, right? Then why did you ignore my calls? I called you so many times. Because you were annoying. Annoying? I'm always angry because of you. Oh, I don't want to hear it anymore. By the way, you called me today because you have something you wanted to ask me about, didn't you? Are you feeling lonely? Do you want me to sleep with you? Don't say stupid things. I just wanted to confirm something with you today. What is it? I received a wedding invitation from a subordinate at work. Someone beat you, and are you feeling lonely? No, don't tease me. You should listen to me seriously for a moment. What? Is there anything wrong? The groom has the same first and last name as you. George is a common name, but the last name is not, right? I don't think it's you, but just in case, I wanted to confirm. It's not you, right? Do you want to know? Huh? I'm asking if you really want to know. You're still an irritating man. That's fine, it can't be you. I must have been crazy to contact you after all this time. Talking to you makes me angry. Goodbye, and don't ever contact me again. It's me. Huh? I'm the one who's going to marry Trish. Ugh, you're lying, aren't you? Why can't you believe it? Trish has fallen for me. I don't want to boast, but the company I work for is a large corporation. She got hired there, so she shouldn't be stupid. I can't imagine her falling for a scum like you. Don't call me a scum to my face. Who was the one attracted by that scum until a year ago? Anyway, because you kicked me out, Trish and I could meet fatefully. 
Trish was kind enough to welcome the pitiful me who you kicked out at the house. She's so nice, unlike you, isn't she? What, what nonsense are you talking about? Have you been at Trish's house ever since then? Yes, that's right. Trish is financially supporting me while I look for work. She's impressive, even though she's five years younger than you. I supported you financially until a year ago, didn't I? That's why I'm grateful. Because I'm grateful, I left as you told me to, right? Talking to you makes me irritated. I can tell that Trish will definitely have a better career than you. Huh? What's your basis for saying that? Not to brag, but I'm one of the top performers in the company. I know that, but you get angry easily, right? Th that's because you always... Unlike you, Trish is kind and considerate, so when I proposed to her, she happily accepted it. I'm so grateful that she's willing to marry someone like me. You're lying, right? Huh? What, are you making a false accusation? Did you say I'm lying? If you're still being supported financially, then you haven't found a job yet, right? Trish isn't stupid enough to marry a man like that. You're deceiving her, aren't you? Don't say something so rude, it sounds bad. I'm making efforts for Trish with my whole heart. Unbelievable, I have to tell Trish that she's being deceived. What? Don't do anything unnecessary. I'm not causing you any trouble, right? Trouble? That's not the point. Anyway, don't do anything unnecessary. The two of us will be happy together. Oh, are you feeling lonely? Frustrated? If you agree to do it secretly from Trish, I'm happy to spend a night with you. Don't be ridiculous. Even the stubborn Kate is cute. Stop it! Okay, okay. Well then, just look enviously at us. See ya. Wait a minute. He's such a scum as always. I have to hurry and let Trish know. I have to stop the marriage. Trish. Hey, Trish. I know you're busy, but there's something urgent that I need to tell you. Oh, hi, Kate. I'm sorry, but I'm working overtime now, so I'll call you back later. I know you're at work, but this is urgent. I have something to tell you right now. It's about your fiancé. What about George? Do you know anything about George? Yeah, we're acquaintances, but that's not important now. It's difficult for me to say this when you're already engaged, but you should not marry him. Huh? It's too sudden. Can you tell me why? As it says on the invitation, the wedding date and venue have already been decided. I don't know what George has told you, but actually, he was living with me until a year ago. What? Really? Yes, it's true. Even when he was living with me, he didn't work and just played around. He was fully depending on me, you know? He kept lying to me that he was looking for a job and kept asking me for money to go out and have fun. You're lying, right? You may wish I was lying, but that's the truth. I had been financially supporting him all that time, and then we had a little argument, and he left me all of a sudden. <laughs> Trish? <laughs> oh no, it makes me laugh. Oh, I'm sorry. It was so funny. I just couldn't help but laugh. What's so funny? W well, the thing is, I know everything. Huh? Wait, did you hear it from George? Of course. I see. Well, that makes everything simple. George is a scum who takes advantage of women. It's better to not marry him. <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious. You're so desperate. Are you upset because George was stolen by me? Th that's not it. Don't misunderstand me. I don't care who's going to marry George or what he's going to do. I don't have any romantic feelings towards George anymore. But because you're the one he's marrying, I just wanted to stop. Trish, you're my important subordinate. So I'm just giving you advice. If you marry a man like him, you'll only be unhappy. You should reconsider. I know this because I was deceived by the same man. So please, you're smart enough to understand, right? <laughs> How funny. You're my rival. Huh? What are you talking about all of a sudden? You're always so calm and collected, smart and good at your job. I've always looked up to you. Um, thank you, but that's not the point here. Oh, don't you understand? 
Was your reputation as a smart and capable person in the company just a mistake? You're fueling my anger. Could you please explain it to me, a smart person? So, it's about achieving my goal. Even though you're smart and good at your job, you still don't understand that? There's no way I can understand. What are you talking about? If you don't understand, let me explain. I stole your boyfriend, George. That means I have the upper hand over you, don't you understand? You... you approached George for that purpose? It's too late for you to realize that now. Um, I don't get it. Can I ask you a question? Oh dear, is there something that even someone as smart as you doesn't understand? Go ahead and ask me, I'll teach you. Are you perhaps stole my ex-boyfriend to feel superior to me at work? Of course. Of course? I don't understand. If you steal my boyfriend, does that make you superior to me? Do you really think that way? So what? Do you have a problem with that? There are so many things I want to say, but it seems difficult for you to understand, so I'll stop. What's that supposed to mean? It's because you say things like that that you'll always have a bad performance. Stupid people are just stupid. You may match well with a scum like George. Can you call me stupid? You're a more incompetent one here. So why is it? Of course, I stole your man, so I'm superior to you. So my position in the company will be higher now. Talking to an idiot who doesn't understand reason gives me a headache. Anyway, I'm better than you. Yes, yes, that's enough. Honestly, you're a perfect match for each other. Congratulations. What? Are you making fun of me? How rude! I can't forgive you! Who are you to say that? Oh, you want to climb the career ladder in the company, don't you? So what? Should I suggest it to our boss? What? Is it okay? Are you perhaps a good person? Trish took my ex-boyfriend away, so she's more capable than me. Can you give her a higher position in the company? That's what I'm saying to our boss. What do you think? What? Is it okay? You're so kind. Um, I'm saying this sarcastically, but are you really okay with that? Of course. Thank you. Okay, I got it. I'll tell our boss tomorrow. I hope you can climb the ladder. Yay, I did it! Kate admitted defeat! I won! Of course. Thank you, Kate! Say what you want, but don't blow your own horn too much. Hey, Kate, can I ask you something? George? I didn't know you were someone who contacts me so frequently. I didn't contact you just to hear your sarcasm. I don't have time to waste on idle talk with you. What do you want? Did you do something bad to Trish? That sounds bad. What are you talking about? She quit the job yesterday. What did you do to her? Oh, I just asked my boss to put her in a position similar to mine as she had requested. My boss misunderstood that I'm going to groom a successor and promoted her to the same position as me the next day. Yeah, she seemed excited about the promotion at first. Right? I even told my boss that she could be my boss after seeing her work. Did you go that far? But recently, she's been complaining a lot about how work isn't going as she hoped. Didn't you help her? Of course not. We have the same position now. She's a sweet subordinate, right? You should have helped her out. She's not anymore. She's in the same position as me. And she's also the woman who stole my man and fueled my anger. If she was a subordinate, I would help her. But in the same position, we both have to complete the same tasks. Poor girl. She cried saying she was demoted because of you. It's not my fault. It's her responsibility to complete the given tasks. You wouldn't understand having never worked for a company before, but it's how the company is. Um, you're looking down on me. I've never been officially employed because I didn't have to. I have plenty of women who financially support me. Besides you. It seems that it's tough being popular, huh? But still, couldn't you have helped her out a little? You're a cold-hearted woman. Don't make me laugh. It was natural for a stupid woman who stole my boyfriend and thought she was good at her job. So, you did this as revenge for me being stolen from you? It was revenge, but it wasn't because you were stolen from me. It was revenge for her fueling my anger two weeks ago. You used dirty tactics for revenge. What's dirty about it? 
I don't want to be called like that by a scum like you. You're so disgusting. You didn't have to get revenge just because you got me stolen and flamed your anger, did you? Can you stop using the word revenge? I just gave her an undeserved position as she wished. Don't blame me for her not having enough ability to keep up with the position. You ignored her even if she asked for help, didn't you? Trish thought of me as a rival. Helping her would be disrespectful as a rival, right? Ugh. Besides, if I keep helping her, it won't be good for her growth. To promote her growth. Ugh, you're annoying. You have a comeback for everything. You're the one who started the fight. But she didn't have to resign, did she? She only got demoted. And now she's in the same position as before. It's a big company, so I think she was making a good amount in her original position, right? I said that too, but she didn't listen. She must have been mentally unstable. She said she couldn't even wake up in the morning. Did she go through a mental breakdown or something? She has a large amount of pride, even though she's stupid. You're going to marry that stupid woman, aren't you? You don't have to be so rude to her. Hey, can you help her come back to work with your authority? You can do it, right? Just tell your boss. Do you know how cheeky for you to say that? At this point, it's too late to mind tiny things, right? Come on, Kate, please. It's difficult. I don't think I can apologize and expect to be forgiven. To tell you the truth, she's terrible. She's been repeated failures and causing trouble with clients and business partners. Her boss is still cleaning up her mess. Seriously? That's ruining my future. What are you going to do about it? Can't you do something? Don't be ridiculous. Did you say it's ruining your future? You're a man who doesn't even work and just goes gallivanting. You don't have a future to begin with, do you? Sh shut up. Trish told me a year ago that she was way better at her job than you are. She said that she couldn't accept that she's more skilled than you, but her position is lower. Well, she can believe in whatever she wants to, but it's the company's evaluation that matters. Her skills don't matter. The problem is that she said she'll earn more in the future. I proposed to her because I thought she would take care of me, but maybe I was deceived? You're a scum as always. Have you ever thought about earning your own living? I never thought about it. Women are there to take care of me. By the way, I recalled the reason for our fight a year ago. What? Our fight a year ago? You said you wanted to stop looking for work and want to be fully financially dependent on me. Was that what I said? Was I pretending to look for a job back then? It seems like no matter what job you have, you won't stick with it, huh? Probably. That's why I'm fully depending on others. Hey, Kate? What? Will you marry me? I won't, scum. You're going to marry Trish, right? You even reserved the wedding venue, haven't you? Oh, come on. Don't bring me back to reality. What am I going to do? Do whatever you want. I don't care anymore. Don't drag me into it. Goodbye. Hey, Kate! Don't turn your back on me! Kate! Kate! Hurry! Kate! Yes, yes, what's the matter now? There's a problem. George is gone. Do you know anything? I don't know. He's always going gallivanting, isn't he? Yes, but he usually comes back when he runs out of money. But lately, we've been spending a lot because of the wedding, and I didn't give him a lot of money, so... He should be back by now, and tomorrow is the wedding! Oh, is it tomorrow? Well, he's not coming back then. Wait a minute, don't be so cold-hearted! Please help me look for him, I'm about to cry! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's tough. Can you tell me where he might have gone? And if you could come with me to look for him, that would be great! You're also quite cheeky. After causing so much trouble, do you still have the nerve to make that request? Because the wedding is tomorrow, that's why I'm in a hurry. Please! You're beyond cheeky that you're refreshing. If he went somewhere, it would be a gambling place or a place with women. When he left, you gave him money, right? Didn't you ask where he was going? Actually, a little before we got engaged, he said he wanted to find a full-time job instead of a part-time one. He's been saying that since he lived with me. But when I quit my job because you bullied me, he got really mad, and he asked how we were going to live, and even hit me. What a scum. And I didn't bully you, just for the record. No, he apologized and was nice to me after that. He said we would work together and do our best. He never hit me. He hit rock bottom. 
Though you believed him even though he hit you, huh? Yes, he's really, really kind when he's in a good mood. Oh, really? Then, about three days ago, he asked me for money because he needed to buy things like a resume and a suit for his interview, so I gave him a large amount of money from my savings, and then... He disappeared. George and the money won't come back. Please don't say that! I'm sure he'll come back! Well, let's try to stay positive, okay? Y yes you're right I'll definitely find him by tomorrow. Yes, it's going to be tough, but do your best. If I see him, I'll let you know. Oh, and there's something I want to ask of you, Kate. What is it? I want you to talk to our boss so that I can go back to the company. What? I quit because I was being bullied by you, but it wasn't because I didn't like the job. So I just want to go back to my old position. It should be easy for you, right? You really don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it's a call. It might be him. Well, I'll leave it to you then. She always says whatever she wants. Someone who lost their income after quitting their job has no value to George. That's why you were thrown away. And job hunting was definitely a lie and he squeezed money from her at last. She dedicated herself to such a scum by giving a large amount of money from her savings. Even though she miraculously got a job at a large corporation, she quit that too. It's a pity for her, but stupid people always lose. I can't say anything about other people because I was deceived by that scam until a year ago. There's no point in regretting it, so let's stay positive. Let's both stop being deceived by such a scum and find a good man. Uh, it wasn't a call from George. Kate? Hey, Kate? Don't turn your back on me and help me! She should be able to do something about it. She needs to reply quickly. I'm in trouble here. I'm in a hurry. What's going on, Kate? Help me, please. Don't turn your back on me. On the day of the wedding, Trish called me multiple times, but I decided to ignore her. After some time had passed and things had settled down, she called me, so I decided to hear her out. Of course, out of pure curiosity. You would be interested in what happened to the scum and the stupid girl, wouldn't you? First of all, George is missing. Trish, her relatives, and his family did everything they could to find him, but they couldn't locate him at all. They even went to his parents' house in the countryside to look for him, but there was no way he was there. He ran away with the money he swindled from Trish. Since he swindled almost all of her savings, I wonder if he pretended to be rich for a while. They filed a missing person report, but since he left on his own, the police didn't take it seriously. George is a scum, but he's not stupid. He's probably managing to escape while deceiving stupid women here and there. Of course, the wedding was cancelled because the groom was missing, and the engagement was called off. They couldn't cancel the reservation because it was the day of the wedding, so they were left with a huge bill to pay. Trish was scolded quite a bit by her parents and relatives. But it's not fair to blame the poor bride who was abandoned by the groom. The anger of the relatives was directed towards George's parents, because they couldn't find him no matter how hard they looked. Now they're accusing his parents of unilaterally breaking off the engagement. At first, George's parents supported this and declared that they would bring their son back no matter what and they did everything they could to find him. However, despite all their efforts, George could not be found. And in the end, his parents also became untraceable. I've never met his parents, but they don't seem like honest people. Trish has completely lost track of George. Trish's parents and relatives are at a loss. Then a shocking fact comes to light. Trish had become a joint surety for his debt. She was burdened with a considerable amount of debt. At first, Trish's relatives sympathized with her, but upon hearing this, they blamed her, saying, where did you meet such a poorly behaved man? Stupid Trish confessed everything. There was a person she longs for at the company and she wanted to be like that person. She thought she could become greater than that person by stealing her boyfriend. She put that plan into action. Upon hearing all of this, her parents and relatives changed their attitude and blamed her, saying, it's worse to steal someone else's love for no reason and it's all your fault. Thus, she became completely isolated. She shamelessly told her relatives everything and shamelessly asked me for help, saying, help me. I immediately hung up the phone and blocked all her contacts. Later, I heard a rumor about her at the company. It's just hearsay, so I don't know if it's true. 
According to the rumors, she's working at a nightclub to pay off debts that she didn't even incur herself. Four years passed and one day, I saw a local news story about a stingy marriage swindler being caught. It was George. The news reported that he deceived several women, took their money, and sometimes controlled them through violence. He managed to escape from Trish and me, but George, you finally got caught. I wonder if Trish is watching the news too? When his detention period ends, if she and her family go to visit him in jail, I wonder what kind of crazy situation it will be. Just kidding, it was me who was fantasizing about the crazy situation. Lucy, may I have a moment? Sure. What's wrong? It's about tomorrow's wedding meeting. Can we change the schedule? That's fine, of course. Thank you. I'm so sorry for the short notice. It's totally fine. Don't worry. Thanks for taking the time to call me. I'm so sorry. I know you're busy too. Don't mention it. The groom, Jack, and I were classmates. I'm so happy to be part of my classmates' wedding. So I definitely want you to be happy. All I can do as a planner is plan weddings. But for a classmate and his wife, I have to give the best wedding ever. Lucy, thank you so much. As a matter of fact, I heard from Jack a little while ago. Huh? He wants to change the schedule. I asked, it's your fault anyway, right? And he said, you know me. He hasn't changed at all. Same old Jack, lol. Even as a student, he was always making last-minute decisions about everything. The teacher was always angry at him. Looks like he still has that habit. I'm kind of glad he hasn't changed, lol. Really? Well, I used to look after him. It made everyone mistake me for his girlfriend, which was a total pain in the ass, lol. I didn't know that. I'll talk to Jack. I'm really sorry about the schedule. How about having the next meeting in a week? Yes, sounds good. Okay, in a week. Looking forward to seeing you then. Thanks for your time today. Thank you too, Lucy. Actually, I feel guilty. About what? We were meeting to discuss plans. But Jack and I got excited over talking about the old days. It's okay, I don't mind. Really? I thought I left you out because all I did was talk about our school days. I'm so sorry. Once I started talking about it, I couldn't stop and it brought back memories. It's totally fine. Rather nice to hear Jack's old stories. Really, I don't mind. Thank you. You have a big heart. If it were me, even though it was a long time ago, I would be jealous if my fiancé was having fun talking to a woman like that. You're so sweet, just like Jack said. No, I just really don't mind. Are you sure? I enjoyed talking to Jack, but I'm afraid I might have made you uncomfortable. You know? You and Jack are classmates. I understand you guys haven't seen each other in a while and have a lot to catch up on. So really, don't worry. And we've both been so busy lately with the wedding and all. It's been a long time since he seemed to be having fun, so I'm glad too. Hmm. Well, it's me and Jack, you know, lol. Somehow, when I see him with you, he doesn't really look happy. I kind of feel sorry for him. Excuse me? What do you mean? Like you said, you saw him enjoying himself with me. Well, we don't know if Jack will continue to have feelings for you in the future. What did you just say? Never mind. See you around. Everything looks perfect, Emily. Thanks for your help, Lucy. I'm glad our last meeting went well. Yeah. 
I'm glad Jack's having fun too. Hey Lucy. What? Thank you for everything. You were so helpful and offered us so many suggestions and advice. But wasn't it a bit too much? Why? After the meetings, you and Jack went out to dinner together. You guys have been in touch a lot. Were we? Doesn't that concern you how you look for other customers? You worry too much. And Jack doesn't mind, you know. Sometimes Jack calls me, and that's okay. So you admit that you two were meeting each other. It's my job to counsel. It happens all the time. Is that so? It's not uncommon for you to meet alone with only the groom or contact him frequently. It's not what you think. I just ended up reaching out to him because he's my classmate. I'm sorry, but if it gets any worse, I would consider cancelling the ceremony. What? Wait a minute. I was really just giving him advice. It's part of my job. Is it your job to call him in the middle of the night? I think you're a little too close for a planner, don't you think? That's... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Maybe we're getting close because we used to date. You were dating? With Jack? Yeah. Jack didn't tell you? No, he hasn't. Oh. Sorry. I shouldn't have said that. But don't worry, okay? We were just meeting to talk about the wedding. Okay. I get it. I hate to say this, but I don't want you to see Jack after the ceremony. Okay, I understand. I promise. Let's make the wedding a big success. Okay then. Lucy, it's our wedding day, remember? Why won't you come? I can't even reach Jack. I've been texting and calling him many times. I haven't heard back at all. Do you know anything about it? Please call me. The ceremony is about to start. I'm worried if something happened to Jack. Lucy, you sure you're not involved in an accident or something? Please call me back. Hi, Emily. Thank God I finally got a hold of you. The wedding is about to start and Jack isn't here. All the guests and Jack's parents are worried. Do you know anything about it? I wonder if he was in an accident. No. What? Jack is fine. Then why isn't he coming? He's here, right next to me. What? What are you talking about? You wouldn't know, so I'll tell you. Actually, we're back together. We're dating like the old days. Huh? What are you saying? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Me and Jack are serious. So, no matter how long you wait, we are not coming to your wedding. Lol. I'm sorry. Ruining the ceremony like this. Lol. But Jack chose me. So, you'll have to understand. Are you out of your mind? Jack can't be happy with you. So, I'll make him happy. Thank you for everything. Former fiancé. Lol. You're invited to our wedding. Lol. I'm not going to have such a crappy wedding. I'm going to have a big ceremony. Overseas. I hope you'll be there. Lol. Are you sure that's what you want? What's that about? You're so jealous. Lol. Well, it would be miserable if your fiancé ditched you on your wedding day. Lol. I understand how you must feel. Lol. I'm so sorry. Lol. No, rather the opposite. Thank you. I'm so happy right now. What? Are you pretending to be okay? No, that's not it. Oh, how lucky I am. 
What? I don't understand. If you're crying, I thought I'd cheer you up, lol. Oh, yes, lol. If you're in such a good mood, since you're there, why don't you have the wedding by yourself, lol? Why would I do that? But thank you so much, Lucy. Well, well, it's obvious that you're freaking out, lol. Jack won't be coming back to you, lol. Because we just got registered a few moments ago. Now do you get it? Jack left you. Oh, you're already registered? Of course, lol. Is this really a shock? Lucy? I'm so sorry. What? What are you trying to say? Don't try to act tough. That's not going to bring Jack back, okay, lol? I'm totally fine. That he doesn't come back. What? You must have lost your mind, lol. I'll be honest with you. Actually, I was unhappy with Jack. I was questioning myself. Is this really what I want? But the marriage talk just kept going and going. That's why we didn't register. I booked the wedding, so I had no choice but to have it. So I decided to just have the wedding ceremony. And then say goodbye to Jack, eventually. Ah! Huh? Thank you for taking in a bad guy. What the... Wouldn't it be fun if you'd cry and make a scene, but you're not reacting too well? Yeah. Sorry for the disappointing reaction. I have a wedding to cancel and all that, so I'll leave you with this. Good luck, Lucy. Missed call. Missed call. Missed call. Hey! What the hell does this mean? Oh. Hi. How have you been? What's up? You're out of your mind. What is this alimony? Alimony is alimony, okay? They're charging me $20,000. What is this? It's just as you see it, isn't it? That's too much. I think it's a reasonable price. I don't know what you mean by reasonable. Why are you charging me alimony when I helped you plan the wedding in the first place? You suck! Oh, I'm charging Jack 30000 remember? 30000 Why are you doing this? Why? Do you know what you've done and the situation here? What? What are you talking about? The groom cheats on the bride for their wedding planner. The ceremony hall gets a bad reputation that the wedding was cancelled for that. I'm leaving my job. I have nothing to do with it anymore. I heard that you've been flirting around with other grooms before. And that there were complaints about the fiancé and the planner getting too close. Well, what is that? It seems that the ceremony hall was also worried about your behaviour. So maybe this time they'll finally be able to take action. Are you threatening me? Like I said before, I'm quitting my job, so what does it matter, lol? You think you can get away with it? I was told that the ceremony hall will be claiming compensation from you as well. What the hell? What the heck? I worked so hard for them. Sounds like a lot of work. No, not at all, lol. Compensation claim? So what? There's Jack's savings. We can afford it. He will do anything for me. I'm sure Jack would be happy to pay for it. Lol. Are you saying he has savings? Yes, you didn't even know that. He really didn't love you. Lol. I didn't realise that. He was in debt when we were dating. Huh? Claim for compensation from me and from the ceremony hall. And on top of that, debt would be a disaster. It sounds like until recently he's been trying to pay off his debts. But does that mean he has paid them all off? What's that? I don't know of any debt he owes. 
Oh, really? Because he said he has a lot of savings. That's a lie. That's a lie that Jack definitely uses when he's hitting on someone. What? No matter how much I told him, he never got over his gambling habit. Even if I say, let's save money together for the future, as soon as we saved up a little money, it was gambled away. I finally got fed up and decided to leave him after the ceremony. That can't be. You're lying. It's true. Be... Because I got to see it. See what? His bank account. He showed me a screenshot of his account balance. The one that had a decent amount of hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings there. It's an undeniable fact. Oh, Lucy. Whoop. What? That's my bank account. Huh? It's a screenshot of my account. Huh? He seems to be bragging about it to his friends showing that screenshot. But that account is mine. Of course, there's not a penny of his money in it. It's all my personal money. And, by the way, he doesn't know my account number or PIN number, so he can't move a penny. That's... If you think I'm lying, you should ask Jack to show you that bank account with hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. I don't think he can, because it's mine. No! No! I'm sorry. This money was saved by me for my parents and my future children. So I told him that I'm not going to give this money to him or lend it to him after we get married. I've been saying that since we were dating. That's why I didn't even give him my pin. Maybe that's why. Jack asked me if he could just take a screenshot. I hid my bank book because I knew about Jack's gambling habits. Then I guess he got tired of me. So he went to you, who seemed to be able to support him. I think he wanted to get married quickly. Oh no! Why didn't you tell me? That's terrible! Emily! Why should I tell you? We were just the planner and the bride, right? No! What am I going to do now? It's none of my business. I'm sure Jack can do something about it. You said Jack has a lot of money, right? Lol. You said that wasn't true. Well, I feel sorry for you, but it's not my problem, really. Oh, but thank you for taking Jack in. I was worried about what I'd do if he started following me around after we broke up. Thank you so much. Hey, Emily. As for the alimony, I'm not willing to reduce it. I'll make sure you pay for it. Oh, no, I can't. Emily. Please, help me out. Hey, Emily. Lucy and Jack have been relentless in asking for a reduction in alimony. I blocked them both from my contact and ended the relationship with them. Lucy is being charged a large amount of money for compensation and she's paying it with her debts. Lucy's actions during her time as a planner were known to her relatives and acquaintances. And she is struggling to make ends meet by working at night with no one to help her. She ended up falling out with Jack because of the debt. Jack left her and disappeared, leaving only debts. Nice to meet you, Sophia. I think it's going to be a short relationship, but pleased to meet you. Sophia, don't ignore me. Richard's wife. Hey. Oh, are you Richard's friend? 
I'm sorry, he never told me about you. Are you from the company? I'm terribly sorry. Not at all. It's okay. But I'm not his friend. Girlfriend. Huh? Girlfriend? I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're talking about. You don't understand... Girlfriend? Well, what do you mean by girlfriend? A girlfriend is a girlfriend. I'm dating Richard. I'm getting frustrated with your lack of understanding. Uh Uh-huh. Wait a minute. You know I'm his wife. Obviously. I don't think you're the one to lose your temper here. Can you explain to me what a mistress has to do with the wife? You're saying pretty terrible things. Okay, I'll explain. I was fooled by him at first. Every time I see him, he tells me he loves me, that I am the only one. He even asked me to marry him. I didn't know my favourite Richard had a wife. But he doesn't see me on weekends, even if I ask. It's the same for Christmas and New Year's holidays. Then you finally realised he's married? Yes, when I asked him, he said he had a wife named Sophia. And you didn't feel sorry for yourself and think about breaking up with him? Ha, how could I think that? You guys should break up. Richard loves me. He tells me that every time we see each other. You poor thing. Ha! He says the same line to me. Maybe he's telling other women too. What? Anyway, you divorce Richard. No, I just got married to Richard. I'm not going to divorce him just because you told me to. Huh. You're so sure of yourself. How long have you guys been dating? It's been almost a year. I'm thinking of getting him to divorce his wife as a gift for our first anniversary. I married him about a year ago. Do you really want to marry a man who, at the same time, is having an affair with another woman? Huh. What a sore loser. If you get married and get cheated on at the same time, it's because you're not attractive. You're frustrated because he cheated on you with a younger woman. Richard doesn't love you. It's ugly that an unloved old woman would cling to a man. Break up now. Oh my goodness, you're just saying what you want to say. Well, I'm counting on it. Hey, Sophia. What do you mean you're not divorced yet? Hey, answer me. So annoying. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? What are you talking about? I told you to divorce him. Why haven't you? I said it before, didn't I? I'm newly married, and I can't divorce that easily. Are you stupid? Hey, who's stupid? Richard says he's getting divorced. You just don't want to get divorced. I told you not to cling to him so miserably. I never hear from Richard about wanting a divorce. Anyway, the wedding is in a month and your fussing isn't going to get us a divorce. Huh? Wedding? What's that? A wedding in a month? Yes, that's right. It's almost ready, so I can't divorce now. If you get it, please just give up. Rest assured, the wedding will be between me and Richard. He and I searched the venue together, consulted with the wedding planner and booked the wedding. You are so brazen to have a wedding instead. Don't worry about it. You can get divorced without worrying about anything. You're the one who's giving up. You... Come on. Cut me some slack. Just because you're registered with him, don't get so high and mighty. Even if you don't get divorced, I'll still be with Richard. I'm being kind telling you that. A couple that's just a formality won't last long. You should break up with them right away for your sake. Yes, thank you for your advice. I don't need advice from my husband's cheating partner. Don't contact me again. How dare you? 
Hey, listen. Hey, Sophia. What are you doing, keeping me waiting for a week? I told you to divorce him right away, didn't I? Oh, I told you not to contact me again, right? I don't want to contact you either. It's because you're so lazy. How long are you going to keep me waiting? Right now, Richard and I are talking about you and about the divorce. It's not that easy to come to a conclusion. When to divorce is our business, not yours. You stay out of it. I'm involved too. Richard is getting divorced for me. If you don't divorce him, I can't marry Richard. It's annoying. Annoying? How could you say that? Anyway, stay out of the married couple's discussion. If you want to get married, wait until the divorce is finalised. Married couple's discussions. You just want to say married couple. What are you two married couples? Your relationship has been cold from the very beginning. Enough. I'll force you to divorce him. You can't force that, can you? I didn't mean to go this far. It's your fault. Because you're not going to divorce him. I'm pregnant with Richard's child. Do you want to marry him for such a lie? It's not a lie. Don't you feel sorry for the child not having a father? Are you really pregnant? Well, I found out yesterday that I am pregnant with his baby. I'm happy. How about you? You don't have children and you aren't pregnant. Wrong? Well, I don't have children. Did you hear that from Richard? You know that my baby and I need him more than you do, right? I just heard about the wedding from Richard. He said the ceremony is going to be just the two of you with no guests. Lovely. Now do you understand? I need Richard and the wedding, not you. Oh, I hope you just give it to me. All you have to do is get divorced. It's that simple, right? Yes, that might be good. I'll give it to you, Richard and the wedding. Really? Seriously? I'm so happy. You're not going to say you change your mind, will you? I'm tired of talking to you. I have no lingering feelings for someone who would have an affair from the beginning of our marriage. Really? Really? Not only him, but also the wedding? Seriously? Supreme! Generous! Thank you, Sophia. I'm impressed. I promise. I'll be happy for you. Yes, have a healthy baby and a happy family. Good luck. I'm rooting for you too. I'm sorry for being so harsh. You're kind and nice. Not really. If he has a baby, he might change his mind. Morning, Sophia. Sophia, don't ignore me. You're making a lot of noise. What do you want? Do you remember what day it is? Today? I don't know. Oh my God, you do remember, don't you? It's me and Richard's wedding day. Oh, it was today. It's been a month since then. It's fast. Are you preparing for the wedding right now? Yes, this is a great wedding venue. The costumes are perfect and the atmosphere is great. Richard decided on this place? Or you? I mostly made the decision, but Richard agreed. You have good taste. Nice place, right? Yes, it's so gorgeous and heavenly. Sorry, you were supposed to be here now. But you don't have to be sad. I'll enjoy it for you. I'm glad you liked it. It's worth $30,000, isn't it? $30,000? This place costs that much? Ah, oh, fa, 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 ah, ah, ah. Sophia, I'm really sorry. You paid $30,000 for us? 
I've changed the billing address to you two. Huh? Billing? You're paying the bill. What are you talking about? You. Weddings are usually paid in advance, right? So I talked to the planner and got her to change the payment to a later date. That's a lie. It's not a lie. That's the contract. You should check it. Wait. $30,000. That's too much. We don't have any guests. As you mentioned earlier, the ceremony hall itself is new and popular, so it's expensive. I consulted with the planner and chose the best time and day. I asked for the highest ranked albums and videos. You have five good photographers who shoot and edit with the best equipment. Lovely, isn't it? No, ah, uh, I think it's lovely, but... Yes, Richard. He was originally going to be at the ceremony, so he'll pay for it, right? I don't know. I don't think he has that kind of money. It's my wedding. He'll pay, I promise. Shouldn't you talk about it before the ceremony? It's the day, and you can't cancel it now, but... Otherwise, you'll regret it later. Oh my, another sore loser at a time like this. Oh, the planner is calling. Back to the preparations. See you. Hey, Sophia. I got a bill of $30,000. What are you going to do about it? Richard doesn't have that much either. You can't just force me to pay. You made such a ridiculously expensive plan, so pay half. Don't be ridiculous. I don't see the point of paying for a wedding I didn't even have. Oh, I can't pay 15000 even if I split with Richard. Oh, by the way, the alimony you will pay is set at $10,000. I'll charge you, so pay properly. What? Even 15000 is impossible. Where did 10000 come from? It's too expensive. I won't pay for that. 10000 is within the market range. How much will Richard's alimony be if I am 10000 Well, 15000 About 21000 I'm sorry you're doing the math, but Richard is a spendthrift. Don't count on him. If you don't work hard, you're going to fall together, okay? Hey, what? Now you're going to talk bad about him? Richard and I love each other. We'll get over the money problem. You're taking the blame on us because you weren't happy yourself. He's going to be unemployed soon. Erica, good luck supporting him. Ah... Uh, what do you mean by unemployed? What do you mean? Oh, didn't you hear from Richard? He was having an affair not only with you, but also a woman he worked with. He got fired from his job when they found out. He'll be unemployed when the handover is over. Ah, uh, seriously? He... It seems that the woman he worked with was also married. It's hard to pay alimony. Wait a minute. I don't know what you mean. The woman he works with? Alimony? Are you panicking? Yes, I'm afraid I didn't expect a three-way. The husband of that woman seems to be very angry. I heard that he is charging a lot of alimony. From now on, you're both in debt, but if you love each other that much, it looks okay. Get through it with the power of love. Wait, wait! I don't know. What are you talking about? I haven't heard anything from him. A woman besides me? He said he loved me, even at the wedding. He said it a lot. Those words were all lies. Anyway, all you can do is pay in full. Wedding and alimony, you'd better pay early. As I said, Richard is a spender. 
Will you be paying for him? Don't tease me like that. I can't afford alimony, let alone a wedding without savings. And what does it mean he's unemployed? He... he is useless. I won't forgive him. Even if you find out that Richard is a piece of waste, you still have to pay the ceremony fee and alimony. Uh, hey, can you forgive me? I'm also paying for the wedding. I didn't plan. So, will you do without alimony? Hey, please. You don't know anything. You and Richard had the wedding, right? You two deserve to pay. Well, that's... You set the plan. You're the one who got married. As for the alimony, you had an affair with Richard, so you deserve to pay that too, right? If you really don't want to... If I don't... I can take you to court. It's even worse. I don't really know about trials and it sounds difficult and scary, you know? Absolutely no. Hey, Sophia... Will you forgive me? I'll give you back Richard. I think I did something really wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize. Forgive me. Sophia, I'm so sorry. I'll do anything if you forgive me. No thanks. I don't want to be involved with you or Richard anymore. I'm going to delete your contact information. Wait a minute, please. Ah, ah. I deleted Erica and Richard's contact information shortly after that. Those two seemed to have gotten into a big fight because of Richard's other woman, and they were on the verge of catastrophe. But while they were doing that, it seems she really got pregnant. They've registered for the baby, and they're living together. Well... It was a predatory marriage after an affair, so it seems that no one around helped them, even their family. That's right. It's hard to give birth, raise an infant, work, and pay off debts. Richard still seems unreliable, and I'm glad she took that plague in. You're a good person, Erica. I'm grateful. <laughs>